I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'd like to call our meeting to order, and we're going to have our site-based council presentations tonight, starting with Muhlenberg South Elementary. Welcome. Middle. Oh, I'm sorry, middle. I'm crazy. Middle school. Mr. Lyle, we want to introduce your folks, and uh, you're on the clock. Got it rolling. <laughs> we'll start with our uh, teacher representatives on site base. We have Mr. Lee Jones, 8th grade social studies, Miss Gwen Carver, 6th grade math, Miss Sarah Carey, 6th grade language arts, and our two parent representatives, Miss Helen Eaves and Miss Stephanie Thompson. Uh, I'll comment on them real quick. This is their third year with us on our site base, and unfortunately, Unless I hold their kiddos back, uh, <laughs> this is this is it for them, and they've been fantastic. Uh, we've, we've been very fortunate, so but it's great. They've been uh, very supportive and always offer great ideas, and we have fun in our site-based meetings. I don't know about others, but we do. Uh, Miss Jamie Randolph, guidance counselor at South Middle School, Officer Miller, our school resource officer, and Mr. Gloyd can't be here tonight. Uh, his son's playing in the Class A uh, single. Baseball. I think I misnamed that, but anyway, that's where he's at. Not that we miss him at all. Uh, we'll dig in. I'm going to go over. You guys have the list in front of you. I'm not going to read this to you. I'll probably skip around a little bit. I'll try to go by categories uh, and hit some of the key things. And then, if at any time questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, same with my site base. Anytime you guys want to throw something in, just stop me. Um, first thing. This, this has kind of become our our standard, kind of what we're going to live to. Right underneath our name there is where students want to come, teachers want to work, and people want to visit. And that has really been something we've strived to be, a place that uh, of each one of those. You know, students want to attend. The flu's hurt our attendance a little bit lately. Um, our teacher attendance, we'll talk a little bit about that. And then we've had people come visit. So we feel like uh, we've succeeded in all of those, but we continue to strive in each one of those areas as well. Underneath K-PREP data, uh, you're aware of our numbers. I'll highlight just a few on the fourth bullet reading at 66.2. You see 60.0, that is the uh, state uh, average. And you see there we're in the top 31% in the state in the area of reading. That's uh, all middle schools. In math at 59.9, well above the state average of 47, and in top 19% in the state there as well. Uh, you see our social studies, science, and writing. Then areas of improvement, I always put all there uh, because even in our areas of math and reading, we still want to improve. We're not satisfied. Top 19%, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm a competitive guy. So with Jerry Rager, I want to beat North every time, and no matter what we're doing. But my goal is not just to beat North. It's to be the best in the state, and that's what we're striving for. So we're looking to improve all of our scores every year. Uh, looking at our scores this past year, writing and science are obviously two that we really want to strive to improve. And when we talk about K-PREP data, just a couple things we do. Uh, we have our we currently have our one-on-one -on -one K Prep talks going. That's with uh, Miss Randolph, myself, and Mr. Gloy. We take we take our group of students, every kid in the building, and we'll meet with them and talk about their K Prep scores from last year. Set goes for this year, and then they know the following year we'll get back together, see how close you got to goals, and set new goals. Uh, so I think that lets the kids know, hey, they're looking at our scores, they're interested. Plus, it gives us a great opportunity to get to know our kids better and so we're able to have some good conversations with them uh, mr. Jones and his PLC group in social studies to improve our social study score they worked on some um, strategies this year to help improve our social study scores Lee did you want to kind of talk a little bit about what you guys are doing we see we're not labeled in the state that's because we're off the chart <laughs> that's what I was told uh, we're in a good place. We just, like you said, we always want to do better. So with every grade, social studies is unique and the kids are tested in fifth grade and eighth grade. So in eighth grade, they're tested over everything they've learned for the last, you know, three years, which you can probably understand it's easy to forget things from year to year. So we're going to bring the other grade level teachers 
students back one day a week for the eighth grade students who are tested. So instead of blitzing them with just overwhelming information, one day a week, review a little bit, and the next week do the same thing. And we're going to do that to try to refresh and knock the rust off the old information. So this will be the first time we've tried that, and we'll see how it works. And that was a, just an idea that our social study teachers came up with on their own through their PLCs, and they brought it, and we said, let's try it, see how it goes. So that leads to the, the next topic of our school visit. Our school visit this year, uh, we decided to look at North Middle and look at their on-demand scores. Their on-demand scores were higher than ours. And that meeting, Miss Carrie, did you go on that one? It was Miss Adams, wasn't it? That meeting ended up being a lot more than what we anticipated. We went to looking for on-demand strategies. What are you guys doing at North? And it became a great opportunity for our language arts teachers to talk, which they don't get the opportunity that much between schools. And from that, and this will be something we carry on into the future years, of scheduling time throughout the year where they get together in an afternoon for an hour, an hour and a half, get some PD credit for it, but then be able to talk about strategies they're using in the classroom, issues that they're coming across that we see across the board in all areas, and, and then we're looking to also move that into math and the other areas as well. Uh, work days are great days for those when those fall at good times, but even if it's not a work day, we're looking to do that in the afternoons. But it was a great visit. Um, you know, we could have traveled an hour and a half and saw another school, but I firmly believe we have great principals, we have great teachers, great schools here in Muhlenberg County, and use the resources that we have. So um, that was a great that was a great visit that we had. Nothing more. If we didn't get anything else out of it, conversations started taking place and uh, getting everyone on the same page. Because we do have students that come from South Middle, they go to North. North comes to South, and maybe they bounce. And the more we're consistent, the better off everyone will be, students included. I just want to. I want to commend Mr. Lyle and, his, and the teachers, and, and as well as Mr. Rager and the teachers. This is something that probably should have been going on even back when I was a principal at North Middle, and it really wasn't. So I, I think. The the groundwork is being laid to, to learn from each other, that attitude, and it, you know, uh, really commend all, you, all your folks the way that went. That's awesome. Next uh, topic, we have school culture. Um, Mr. Gloyd's not here, so I'll brag on him. Uh, if he was here, then I probably wouldn't. Uh, but if you look there at 1415, Mr. Gloyd likes to call that BD before Doug. Uh, so you see 1,119 events, 256 students. The years after day. that, he calls that AD. I thought it was a bad day. Yeah. Bad year. For those kids, it probably was a bad day. Uh, and then you see from 1,119 events in 1415 to currently 1819, 149 events. Uh, I think that speaks volume. Uh, not only Mr. Gloy, but our teachers. And I think it speaks volumes of our, our students, mm -hmm. uh, their parents as well. And, you know, sometimes when you're the assistant principal, you catch the bad rap because you got to play the bad guy. I get to play the good guy a lot of times. Uh, but I think this is evidence that, that parents buy in. They know. And it's interesting, the one on one K prep talk I had with one of my students, I always ask them, ask my eighth graders, what are you going to miss the most when you leave South Middle? And one of the eighth graders recently told me, good student, I'm going to miss the discipline. Wow. She said, and she comes from a student, she actually, they were in Eastern Kentucky, moved here. She said, I've been in other schools. And kids kind of get to do what they want to do. They don't have consequences. And she realized that the good kids were getting able to get their instruction because they didn't have to worry about the negative. And I think that plays a big part in the school culture because our teachers know if you send a student down, they're not going to come back, at least not that class period. And uh, and students know that too, and that makes a difference. Um, and, you know, consistent with everyone. But I, you look at that number, 1,119 events down to 149, uh, that's, that's impressive. I, however you look at it, it's impressive. Uh, the next book it teacher attendance you know I talked about uh, a place where teachers want to work and we are currently one of the highest percentages for teacher attendance across the district we get the report on that and 
and uh, we were consistently at the top uh, along with a couple other schools but um, that makes me feel good I know I have teachers who are there I've got teachers sometimes they've got a sick kid we get that you know you're, if you're sick your kids are sick you got something going on you know we respect that and and I think that in return is respect back that they're at work uh, when they can be uh, I've got I'm fortunate I have a great staff uh, great parents um, students it's I mean in a pretty good place uh, so very blessed for that next you see our school culture we like to do a lot of different activities with our students so we have several different student activities that we'll do throughout the year we will have math rewards we'll have attendance rewards uh, several different things that we do throughout the school year to allow students the opportunity uh, to have fun and enjoy coming to school and on the next page some other activities uh, we have our staff book studies and I put with activities because we make sure that in our staff book studies it's not just about here's a book we're going to talk about this book we try to learn more about each other and have fun to Together, laugh together because the more that happens the more you grow as a family and and that's what we that's what we consider ourselves at South Middle is not a, a staff but we consider ourselves a family of uh, people next you see our thank you Thursdays that you guys are familiar with as well yeah. uh, the great news successes email those go out every Monday morning uh, send those out uh, to several individuals throughout the state as well as it within the district we have our father son our mother their daughter nights and I just put unique assemblies we do things at the end of the year to where I'll bring in uh, different speakers uh, this year for example we're gonna have a magician come we've got a comedian coming we've got a BMX just to reward the students for having a good year you know we do those in the afternoon of K prep it's not necessarily that you did well on K prep or you gave your best effort but you know what we know you worked hard that morning so we're going to reward you in the afternoon and I think I you know assemblies like that go a long way with our kiddos to know that hey you, you give some for us and we're, we're going to do everything we can for you next is school safety um, I'll hit each one of these bullets situational awareness training officer Miller he led that for us this year and we did take and we laid some different items I think I shared this at a board meeting we laid some different items around the building to see if teachers would realize it and sure enough they did uh, they turned those and they did it the right way they didn't pick them up and bring them in they just reported it and we were able to handle that I think on that day actually me and you were both at a training uh, so I think they kind of freaked out because of that but um, Wes does a great job with our staff uh, district-wide we had a reunification training uh, which is very informative our emergency drills uh, with the twist we we like to spin things up with our emergency drills we'll block an exit on a fire drill we will pull a fire alarm during a lockdown we will um, get on the intercom and say all is clear come on out in the hallways just to throw people off um, and the first time that we did this what, two years ago where we did a fire alarm in the middle of a lockdown drill we had teachers send their kids out my personal opinion there's no better to learn and make a mistake than a drill we've never had it happen since so that lets me know that they're learning through our drills we've recently had some subs in the building and some guest speakers in some different rooms and I got on the intercom and I said all is clear you may exit the volunteers got up and said okay guys and the kids stopped them and said no we don't leave until they come to us um, so that's that's pretty powerful so it lets us know that the kids have bought in you got anything to add to that uh, I think it's great to see I visit a lot of the different schools and uh, my personal opinion I think South Middle sets the standard for safety in the district just by the tests that they do with the students during the drills great job we're very thankful for Mr. Miller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure. He saves us a lot of times. He's he's always there in case of a small emergency to a big emergency, and 
Um, I've taught 25 years, and I've never felt more safe in a school building than I do right now. Mm -hmm. awesome. And it, it's not just just because of all the drills and the training. It's also the fact that he's there. And I know if something major were to go down, he's the person we're going to go to. And he's he's so calm and even natured. I just think he's a very um, welcome presence in our building, and I hope we can keep him a very long time. And Father, to the board here, this is the, the impact you've had by adding that position yes. and added another one with mm -hmm. Robertson with elementary. You know, so that's you know, you're, it, that is a, it, it does make a difference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you, yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, something you'll probably hear, I don't know, maybe you've already heard, the next bullet there is the Raptor system. That is one that we are currently piloting at South Middle, and I believe the plan is to go district-wide possibly next year. And I know some of you have been by the school where you turn in your driver's license or you give them the driver's license, they scan it, it's able to run through a system. If anyone is on the uh, predator list, it pops up with a picture. I will say Mr. Davis's name did pop up. <laughs> it was a different uh, Mr. Davis. Davis out there. He's not a good guy. Uh, he's not a good guy. Uh, but we were able. The picture popped up, which was it was kind of neat to see because it was the first time we'd had one flag, and so that picture come up. You were able to compare it to our Mr. Davis to say obviously it's not the same one, but it's a great system. And my front office ladies love it, which tells me that it's a good program. If it added more to them, then I would have to, I'd have to question. It. But for them, they said it's so much better. If we had to go to another site, all we would have to do is log in to see who is currently in our building and where they were located. Uh, so it's a great program. We've been very pleased with it and using it. And uh, as Ms. Carey said, I'll, I'll also echo her comments. Uh, it's great to have uh, Wes with us, and that's compliments to you guys. He also um, he has a weekly email that he started a couple of weeks before spring break. Uh, his safe safety advice for education we get every Tuesday morning to our staff, and it may be something school related. I think the last one he sent out was about the importance of keeping up with your serial numbers on your vehicles and over. Uh, just different items in your home in case something fire or stolen so it's information that we can use on a regular basis too so that that's that's a nice touch he he asked if he could do that and I said absolutely go for it who all does that go out to just right you now guys south middle that's uh I would like I would like for that to be district wide if you're good with that yeah. sure. Sure. Brian, I'd like to do yeah. access to that right everybody send it to everybody if not send it to me yeah. okay send that out to everybody if you would okay yeah he has access to the cloud. Yep, we yeah, can. We get your. Uh, we'll add those to it. Uh, it's like I say, it's a great email because some days it may be something about school. I know one was serial <laughs> numbers receipts. and gas receipts. Gas receipts, making sure you don't drive off when it says see you attendant. You better see attendant. Uh, but it's it's great information, and I'll forward those out. Uh, the two he's uh, two or three he's in already. Now we're all wondering I'm what. <laughs> Everybody starts to get concerned. I know it. <laughs> Yeah, More that had me. <laughs> All right, uh, next is soft skills. Obviously, uh, district wide, something we've really worked on this year, as uh, in years past as well, but really an emphasis this year. Just a few things we do employability skills. Uh, Mr. Eads and Ms. Skipworth, both in their classes, they teach those. They have guest speakers come in. Uh, we've had some mock interviews where we had Chris Dennis come in and actually do interviews with a couple kids in front of all of the class. And then afterwards, these were things that were that you guys did well. These are things that you need to improve on. Uh, so we continue that. We have our Leadership Academy at school where students actually have to fill out an application. They have to go through an interview process with myself and Mr. Gloyd, and then they just find out if they made the academy or not. Not everybody gets in. So, you know, sometimes you don't get in, you try again next year. Uh, reality Store Operation Preparation. Something we really enjoyed this year was our Chick-fil-A event for 8th graders. Miss 
Randolph was able to uh, get this going and made a contact and the uh, lady that owns the Chick-fil-A in Hopkinsville was able to come in. Um, we were able to have Chick-fil-A for all the students, box lunches, or for all the eighth graders, their box lunches, and then she was able to talk to them about Chick-fil-A and what it takes to start up a business and then also the soft skills. And if you ask me, where do you start? You start at Chick-fil-A. Yeah. They're the experts. Yeah, absolutely. And so our students had the opportunity to receive that information. So it was very good, something we hope to continue each year for our eighth graders. And I'll just jump in. It's, it's obvious. Not that they weren't already good last year. They were. South Middle, you know, the kids are just, they're just, I say, well trained. But they're just good kids and in a good environment. But this year you can tell the difference. I mean, just talking the soft skills district wide, I have to say, just raising the expectation level, kids respond to that. And, and you see that when I'm there, they're, they're just so friendly. And, uh, you know, it's nice now because used to I'd go to Bremen or North Middle to get my fix because those kids kind of knew me. Uh, but now as I'm getting into other schools and, you know, I just feel so welcome there from your kids. So hats off to what you're doing with the soft skills. Thanks, sir. And then I just added uh, new to MSMS. These are, uh, we're always trying to think of new things to add, you know, never be complacent and keep us keep us on our toes and trying new things. But new to MS, MS this year, first you have our Thank You Thursday notes. We've always, for the last, what, four or five years, Thank You Thursday. <coughs> this year we said, this year we're going to do notes at 11 o'clock on those Thank You Thursdays. Every staff member, every student in the building will write a thank you note to an adult in our building. And to be honest, I didn't know what that would look like. I didn't know how it would go over. I had one teacher told she told me that I kind of felt like this was going to be cheesy until I read my first one and I had to break out the Kleenex box. <laughs> uh, they very touching. Our kids write some great thank you notes, letters. We've extended it a couple of times to our bus drivers. Um, can't think of who else. Maybe bus drivers, previous principals. Previous principals. Um, I didn't care for that one too much. I, <laughs> we, any of them that said, "Miss Jones, you're my favorite principal of all time." Those found the trash can pretty quick. Oh, yeah. She didn't get those. Um, I'll skip. So <laughs> oh, I forgot. I got a green one. Uh, I meant Mr. Wells. Did I say Miss Jones? I meant Mr. Wells. He's in the building too. Yeah. True. <laughs> Um, I'll skip down here, not to go over all of them. The professionally maintained uh, custodial signs, these are ones that we uh, got to be at KSA with uh, Steve Bowler, and he's actually our opening day speaker, uh, first day for teachers next year. Great speaker, if you can get the opportunity to hear that, uh, he's great. But he had all these strategies of different things to try, and one was a sign in the restrooms and the hallways that may say professionally maintained by Angela Shoemaker mm -hmm. or Steve Crow, and so we like that so we had our signs made and put them up in a restroom and says professionally maintained by Angela Shoemaker and the kids that know who Angela is they love her and so they're going to make sure that that restroom Absolutely. stays clean. Uh, when I put, first put them up, my custodians thought that it was to keep them on track and <laughs> responsible, but I said that's not it. Uh, but plus it gives them a little ownership and gives them the credit that they deserve. Uh, joke of the day, every morning uh, we start with a joke of the day. Uh, these are pretty bad jokes, uh, but our laughter afterwards kind of makes those even funnier. And We've actually got kids that will turn them in, and so we're doing that as well. In the mornings, uh, we play music, except for on Wednesdays. That's our FCS day. But uh, like on Tuesdays, we have our TV Tunes Tuesday. So we'll play TV old TV tunes, and uh, on Monday, Thursdays, and Fridays, it may, who knows what it might be, it comes up. Um, but I think the kids have enjoyed that. Birthday buttons, this was something that actually came from Brent Hardison. Uh, he talked about it at Disney World when it's your birthday and you go, you get a pen. And so he started that at Longest and we kind of copied that idea. And we're using those and we'll see kids later.
later in the day. And when you're talking middle school kids that have a button that says it's my birthday, that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> some of them have them in their pockets and they don't want anybody to know, but we still see some that wear them, and so that's nice. Uh, this year, random times, I'll give out teacher coupons, maybe for no bus duty, an opportunity to leave early, hit the snooze where they get to, I'll cover their first 15 minutes of their class or room service. Uh, just something different to add to our teachers. We have our WOW Locker Awards. Uh, we'll go through, if we see a locker that's neat and organized, we'll slap a sticker in there that says, this is a WOW Locker, see us at lunch, and you know we'll let them sit where they want, or maybe they get a treat, something like that. And so they enjoy that. And then the last thing that I'll mention is our Student Connections activity. This was something that Ms. Penley had mentioned. She had seen somewhere, so where you take every student's name in the building and you put them up on a post-it card or an index card. During a work day, teachers go in and they put an initial that they have a good connection with that kiddo. We had cards filled up of teachers. I've got a great connection. But unfortunately, you have those students that may not have those strong connections. So we were able to find those cards that maybe they didn't have that one true adult that felt like they had a connection with them. And we started targeting those kids to make sure that, hey, we're going to make sure that we just say, hey, in the hallway, call them by name. How's your day going? How, how, when the grade cards come out, how did, how did you do on your grade card this time? Nothing's big where it's a big mentor program and you're taking them out to Walmart. Just a simple thing to let them know that you care. And, and that was a great activity that we that we enjoyed. So that concludes what I have. I'm going to open it up to my site base. Uh, if any of you guys have anything to add or if you guys have any questions. I would like to say something. I was at your school last week uh, for the operation preparation, and I want to tell all of you, teachers and parents and principals, it was impressive. The kids looked me in the eye, the ones that didn't, I said, are you forgetting something? And they snapped right up and said, oh, that's right, I'm sorry, or they apologized, or they met me, shook my hand. It was amazing. And to have middle school students do that was really amazing. I used to be a junior high principal as well, so I know. Um, I had a lady from from uh, Massfield Community College that was there, <laughs> and I, I went around table to table during that, and I said, well, what are you seeing with, their, with my kids? I'm sorry, they're my kids too. <laughs> and every one of them was like, I'm so impressed. And the lady from from National Community College, she said, this is the best I've ever seen in all my years of doing this. The way the kids are looking me in the eye, shaking my hand, asking me good questions. And so you're seeing these kids make these impressions that's going to help them so much when they either go for a job or get into college. So I think we're really doing a service to our kids. And I commend South Middle in particular for your, your teaching these kids skills that are darn near as important as the math and the other things. You know, so, but they did. It was one after another. I mean, it I came to you as well, but the others and that lady, she said, it's the best I've ever seen. So that's pretty high praise. Thank you. And I did hit them pretty hard on attendance that they had a few days out. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much for that. She's a drill sergeant. I am. She was. I know. And, and what you said, I commend all of you. Every, every kid I've ever had that I had a really hard time with has come back to me at some point in my life and said, thank you for yeah. being tough on me. Yeah. I needed it, and no one else in my life was being tough on me at the time. And it's all about expectations. It's all rewarding. Yeah. It's, all right. it's all rewarding. Yep. You're and not going to get And I all. commend all you folks on yes. there, teachers and uh, parents alike, because I know how nice it was to have a site-based council that worked with you and for the kids. Yep. Same page, no agendas. Let's just roll up our sleeves and do what's best. And he's told me that about you guys guys numerous times and and I commend you for giving all that extra time and you get what do they get paid is it it's not very yeah. much yeah. Just got raise it. Yeah. Thank you very much yeah Did the raise you get to be with Mr. Lyle for a little longer <laughs> but it is uh, it is a thankless job but it is so good to see a group that works well together because the kids benefit from that and Mr. Miller thank you thank you and thank you all appreciate it. and I'm assuming because Lee Jones is on this committee that only three ran so maybe next year you can try <laughs> to get a little bit it only more. took you 
you three months to come to the first meeting. <laughs> I, thought, I thought maybe he was getting a lot of these coupons every time I'm there, you know. The teacher doesn't teach or something like that. <laughs> we love Lee Jones. So we wouldn't be doing this. But, I just uh, want to say thank you, and I think what you've got at the top where students want to come, teachers want to work, and people want to visit describes your school because you. I'm impressed every time I go there. I love yes. getting the emails on Monday morning. It just makes my week. Uh, you're just a, a role model for everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate that. I definitely think your school sets an example and a standard for a lot, you know, in the district. And I appreciate all of you working hard and and having that, you know, standard for your kids to meet and, and a goal to to attain. So, thank, thank you very much. Congratulations for maybe passing Bremen since new ownership is there. It did get easier. We appreciate. We do appreciate you guys. Yes, Great job. Thank you very school. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you. Mr. Uh, South I Elementary. Yeah, we'll introduce everyone. Uh, we've got Miss Penny Gates. She is uh, on our site-based council as a teacher. She's also our computer science instructor. Miss uh, Rebecca Johnson. She's our guidance counselor. Who's next? We got uh, Stacy Jordan. She's one of our parent reps. We have Loretta Fleming, fifth grade teacher. Casey Medford, first grade teacher. Mr. James Knowles. He is a, our second parent rep, and then Miss Sherry and myself. So. Uh, Glad to be here. And thank you for thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Thank you thank for you inviting all. us. What we have, um, I gave you a handout, and this is basically what we're going to go over this evening. Um, if y'all got any questions, feel free to ask as we go. And we've got several other members may may jump in from time to time. I may call on them for them to talk about a few things as we go through this. Sure. Uh, our focus on instruction, we received a book uh, at the beginning of the year. It's called Ideas, Ideas, Ideas. And we were um, asked to try to pull things out of that book. And we do uh, one thing with our math skills on the morning news. We have been, at the very beginning, we have, at, at first we did multiplication tables. And all the kids would see that very first thing in the morning. We've gone through our multiplication tables. And now Miss Gates is out looking for other videos on YouTube that fall in line with math skills. So that's how we start our day uh, with that. We uh, number two response to intervention. Uh, we redid our schedule this past year. I revamped it, and we put a block of time at the beginning of the day, and it's uh, solely involved with RTI. So as we come off the news, which we're supposed to come off the news around 7:45, we go straight into an RTI block, an RTI block for reading, an RTI block for math. Uh, that block is kind of fluid. Grade levels will do different things based upon what they have decided to do with their extra RTI teachers. We took our art teacher, uh, who was a classified employee last year, we moved her to an RTI role this year. Uh, we took our ESS uh, instructor. She's doing a lot with ESS, but also along with RTI. And then all of our special teachers, Ms. Gates is involved in that, along with um, Coach Hagen, our PE teacher, uh, Ms. Hazlitt, our music teacher and uh, Miss Thompson and they go into grade levels during that early morning block and work with those teams of teachers on RTI each grade level does things a little different um, Casey can share at this time what she does in first grade uh, with what they're doing with RTI yeah, so we the way that we're doing it in first grade is a little bit different than um, each pod kind of uses their support staff a little bit differently but in the first grade pod, like Mr. Wells says, we have Ms. Thompson, Ms. Lisa Thompson that comes down and helps. And she is in, um, she does all of the tier, she services all of the tier three students. So she has um, a smaller group for a longer period of time. While that tier three is happening out in the commons area of the pod, um, each one of uh, the 14 teachers, we are doing um, a math and a reading tier in our classroom. And the way that we break that up, we do it in, because you have to have four data points, and then you evaluate where the kids go, whether they're moving or staying, or back to tier one, or move on to tier three. And we use our Ames Web score to identify each child's specific need, where we're gonna start them in tiers. And then um, after we get our four uh, data points, we look at their, 
progress monitoring score decide whether they need to continue in tiers or and it's all team like we all sit down and do it together so it's not just me making a decision for you know my kids it's all of us putting our brains together and deciding who needs to move or who needs more time and it's very fluid like Mr. Will said like I have kids from at all the other classes depending on like I may teach this this now weeks for instance I'm teaching quantity discrimination for math and so I have a small group. I only have four in this group this time, but I've had up to six or more even. Um, and then I'm teaching a phonemic segmentation group, which is a, a reading tier. And um, I have kids from different classes. And it also helps with P5 meetings. And you know, when you are trying to plead your case with a parent, if they need an extra year, that you have someone else's professional opinion on whether or not that child needs another year. It's nice to hear from another um, teacher that you're child you know where they stay in as far as to do it so it works and um, it's it's been really successful I feel like it's a very strategic way and it's also good to get fresh faces and it's constantly moving around and it's not just me with the same kid and interventions in a small group all year long we're constantly moving and out so it works it works for us yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna Go springboard off of that real quick to say how proud that I am of first grade because as you've heard a couple times already different people different grade levels do different things within their grade level and this was a, a tactic and a way for first grade that they came up with on their own um, to be able to make this fluid group that travels throughout their pod area every day and they trade kids and they trade around and they communicate with each other differently than what some of the other grade levels do so they have had the flexibility to be able to do that and have done a wonderful wonderful job at it and I want to commend these folks because, you know, South Middle is, a, is another one of the schools that was hit. Bremen has been to all of them with staffing. Mm -hmm. And you have to keep staffing in line. We understand that. But it but it hurts. And these guys have taken what they have and and, and adjusted to fit what's best for the kids. And and I, I commend you and I respect that because it's not easy. I mean, it, you lose one teacher, it matters. And we've had to do that some. And uh, they have adjusted and to the best of their ability, they're meeting their kids kids individual needs if there are no questions uh, on that we'll move on to number three uh, the school visit this year we went to Burns Elementary in Owensboro and um, we took a, a team of teachers and administrators <coughs> and just kind of sat down with um, with their leadership team at the beginning and they just talked about how things operate at Burns and uh, the reason we chose Burns is because they have had uh, high achievement on their, their, in, their school assessments for years. One thing that I remember that, that stood out to me with Burns is uh, when it came to they realized that they needed to make some changes and uh, they just decided to move forward with those changes and they basically said and teachers that went on this trip y'all y'all chime in they said we're not going to worry about uh, the assessment of the test this year because we've got some things we want to try to implement the, they tried to implement and they did a uh, writing and reading curriculum the first year and uh, they were also this past year they're working on a behavior a new PBIS model uh, to help with um, with behavior issues and uh, the focus with their teachers was let's just implement these changes or the changes we want to try and they were very pleased with their scores because their scores improved um, even when they weren't per se you know concentrating on, on that test so they were giving the kids what, what they needed and that's something that we're, we're looking at doing uh, this year uh, so the PBIS model that they were using I think they used Dojo and some other mm -hmm. uh, things mm -hmm. it's a school wide model mm -hmm. we're looking at maybe trying something like that next year also they're departmentalized which was something I thought was interesting uh, when we think of departmentalization we think of our upper grades like maybe grades 4 grades 5 but they were departmentalized from kindergarten up so they had a teacher or two teachers in each grade level uh, one set would teach reading the other set of teachers would teach math and those kids would rotate among among teachers uh, throughout the day that is something that we have talked with with our teachers I have talked with some groups extensively about that uh, they are they are they might want to try it but maybe not to the full extent that uh, that Burns tried it this year so that's something we're looking at maybe doing next year is some departmentalization there are advantages of that the advantage to that is you can have uh, your teachers that are strong in reading they're teaching reading you have your kids uh, teachers that are strong in math they're teaching math 
Um, the downside to that is you may you're dealing with more kids and you may lose some of those connections with those kids. But according to Burns, they said that that was not a that wasn't a problem, and that's something they've been doing for years, and that's something that they um, they really <coughs> think is is useful. Uh, so you can see some things that went on while we were on that uh, on that trip. Okay, mindfulness is something that um, that we have started this this year, and this came from Miss Johnson. She can talk a little bit about it in just a second, but uh, she has guidance lessons, and she does a wonderful job because uh, guidance counselors in our schools do more than counseling. They do a lot more than counseling. As a matter of fact, they have very little time to do the counseling part of it. But she finds time uh, every semester to get into classrooms and do lessons with them and this is one thing that we have started we end our newscast with the mindfulness video try to get everybody focused at ease uh, Rebecca do you want to say anything about Ozzy or anything mindfulness is just a lot of research says and it you know it has benefits social benefits cognitive benefits uh, emotional benefits and um, there's, it's just a, it's not like you think about some a Buddhist that they're just trying to get. Like it's, you know, it probably has its roots in something like that. But it's just being in touch with the present. You know, being able, you know, you're breathing. Um, it's also to help with attention. You know, if kids can learn, like they're sitting there trying to, you know, pay attention to their breathing, and you know, just like we as adults, your mind starts wandering on something else. You learn how to bring that attention back into focus, and it's supposed to help with a lot of things like. That. So, and just it's supposed to help with your social, emotional well-being. You know, just that's improvement in self-esteem and behavior. It does. You learn how to. You get distracted. You know, you you know, you all have been at point A, and you're driving down the road, and you wonder how you got to point C. Mm -hmm. You know, just bringing your attention back to the present, focusing on. I'm a big fan of that. Is that going well? I mean, the kids responding to that. That's neat. It is. Yeah. Of course, you know, it's a lot of like yoga and stretching, and it'll even have uh, coach them through like feelings and how to manage stress, and it'll talk about like strategies that they can do, count to ten, or send someone caring, you know, wishes, and it's really good. It's stuff that we don't get to teach as teachers. You know, we don't really have a lot of time to, you know, specifically teach, but it, that fifteen or five minutes that they get it in the morning is seems to be really beneficial. They look forward to it. Very nice. It's pretty much related to soft skills mm -hmm. in a way. Absolutely. They fall yeah. down to soft skills, you know, after that, you know. And Dojo um, is a great program. Yes, My I'm son, sure. that's how we monitored all of our three kids at elementary uh, uh, right. Central City. Right, we have and in our My son too. still gets, so before he gets off from bus, I already know yeah. what it was. <laughs> what was the score today? Yeah. And up five or down one right. or whatever it is. And it's a, another great community way with a parent to a teacher they can do you know uh, yeah. I, I think I, I like it we're looking at trying yeah. either that or something very similar to it do y'all have any more questions about mindfulness we use go noodle a lot for that we all need that and in the, in the district pays for go noodle for for us to, to pull some of those videos uh, field trips, every grade level has uh, had field trips connected to their focus area of instruction or 2A focus area of instruction. And we try to, we've done a lot of field trips with the Work Ready Grant that we received from Philip C. Martin, but we're also gearing up for into the, the uh, year field trips. As a matter of fact, after our teachers meeting today, the, the last grade level to, to chime in was second grade, and they're, they're planning on going to Owensboro to maybe visit a couple of museums up there at Cole Museum, maybe a science museum, and then spend some time there at the, the park there at the riverfront. The next page is focused on the soft skills. This is something that Mr. Davis um, has been asking the district to do. Um, and we have been working on this uh, throughout the year. Right now, we are working with the 55 Essentials by Ron Clark. Today, the essential skill was, was it 24 or 25? Which one was it? 25, uh, make sure you flush the toilet and wash your hands. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of our kids, you think, well, that's, but, you know, 
I go to a lot of restaurants and I'm in there with men and they don't wash in their hands and sometimes they don't wash and I'm like we should have learned that soft skill but anyway those are some things that uh, that uh, we're working on right now and it will change every week or so and I, I want to say you know as I'm in the school the South Elementary kids are exceptionally exceptionally mannerly and respectful I mean and it's just so cool because they're for me because they're finally learning my name and that makes it better for me personally but even before they did they'll look at you they'll smile at you they'll they'll high five you shake your hand that they have done there's so many cute stories with kids at South Elementary <laughs> as I've been there I've, you know the Matt Perkins telling the story about them just keeping staring at him as they walked by forever and even you know he was like what have I done wrong and they were working on soft skills eye contact <laughs> so it was maybe a bit much Yes. What, what a uh, person do I contact? Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I am very impressed uh, when I'm at South. That's a, uh, I commend uh, the whole staff because you can absolutely see it when you're there. Thank and you. I want to thank Miss Gates for working on getting those skills on the newscast every morning. She has to kind of play around with the wording and stuff to make it uh, appropriate for our school. It takes a little bit of work. Uh, the next item is our focus on gap groups. This is something that uh, we all look at, uh, especially when we start thinking about our K prep scores. And um, with our students coming, our gap students, um, we can talk a lot about um, our our school readiness for our kindergarten students when they're coming in. Uh, our gap kids are way behind, um, so there's always going to be a focus there. One thing we're trying to do is get parents involved with the school, and you can see that we've tailored our family nights to provide additional opportunities for students and their families to focus on things that need to improve. The last family night, we had a joint effort between second and third grade, and it was geared towards science. How did that turn out, the parent, like, how was that turn out? We had, well, it's, you feel like you're having a better turnout when you lump grade levels together. There were, last year and the year before, we were doing them each grade level per night, and it was not a tough time. So I would say that uh, it looks better. <laughs> Because we've got better turnout, but I, I think we are doing better with, sure. with the turnout overall. I really it's do. not you or just general everywhere. I, I really think, yeah, and I think we're doing a better job of not involved in kids' lives. Right. So we're looking for those opportunities to try to get those parents into the building. But I, I would say overall, like, I feel like we're, they're better, well attended compared sure. to uh, maybe previous years. But that's been a push of ours. Um, Okay, the next thing is um, we have a high poverty rate in our school, which a lot of our, our schools in our district do, but we're one of the highest, and uh, a lot of our kids, you know, they don't get out to, to go to places to experience things that that other uh, students and children may be, may be experiencing. I can remember, you know, I was blessed as a kid. I got to travel to California with my mom and dad and family when I was young. Uh, there are a lot of kids who uh, at our school who have never probably been out of Kentucky um, and if they have they, they may not have even have known it uh, they were just traveling here and there to, to get where they needed to get so we try to have shows experiences at our school to bring those to the kids and I, our family resource director Kim Meadows and she was supposed to be here tonight but she's taking care of her mother who's ill um, she does a wonderful job finding experiences for our kids uh, we've listed several here the BMX show there was an emphasis on physics, um, a lot of practice. He talked a lot about uh, practice, a lot about history of bicycling, bicycle safety, which was good. We had a laser light show, which was all about science. That was uh, remarkable and fascinating that they could do all that they were doing with one single laser all over the gym. We had a gentleman who came in right before spring break who did basketball tricks, which was really cool, kind of our March Madness uh, fitting in with that theme. He talked a lot about um, practice he talked a lot about respect uh, he's worked with a lot of uh, NBA teams over the years and, um, and he was very interactive with the kids he had more kids out on the floor than we've ever had he did a really good job 
we've got another show coming up uh, this month. It's called Animal Tales. So we'll, it'll have a theme where we'll have live animals, I'm sure, and then stories that go along with those. And then we also had a, a theater group come in. It was STEM, but there was acting, and it, it, fit, it fit along with the Frankenstein uh, story. So it was called Franken-STEM. <laughs> yeah, That's what I was wondering, was the spelling spell yeah, joke no, Franken-STEM. So everything was on science, technology, uh, engineering, and mathematics. It was a very interesting uh, show. Any questions about any of that or focus on our gap groups? I love all the activities. That's great. Keeps them interested, especially in science. Yes. And math. We talked a little bit about the family nights uh, above, and there's a little bit more on what we're doing with our family involvement. Now we can flip over to the next page. You can't go wrong with Dr. Seuss, but we had a Dr. Seuss family night in his kindergarten and first grade. First grade always does a camp read a lot at the beginning of the year, and then around March, when's Dr. Seuss's birthday? March the 3rd. We have um, Seuss is loose in the school read across America, so we, we did that with uh, first and second, excuse me, kindergarten first in the gym, which w it was well attended. It, and it, teachers do a wonderful job getting activities together, better fun for the kids and for the parents our ready for kindergarten group is growing uh, we feel like we've had a lot of families involved in that this year That's great. more than normal which is good and we're planning a summer success program our title one parent involvement money we were able to buy some sort of like workbooks uh, that you can do during the summertime and they're grade level appropriate we tried them last year we're going to do it again this year we're trying to get some other materials to go with those workbooks in the hands of parents and kids over summer we try to help with the summer slide we talked about that a little bit today during our teachers meeting as well those are some of the highlights things that we're doing at our school other things we need to work on as always uh, we uh, continue to be innovative and we always look to our teachers uh, for for their expertise and we trust them and we also look to our parents we've got two wonderful parents that sit on this uh, on this council and um, very appreciative of what they do and I'll say just uh, personally when I first started as an elementary principal which I didn't have any idea what I was getting into really but uh, he Mr. really didn't Mr. <laughs> I didn't I was as green as I could be with those with the little ones uh, Mr. Wells was a huge help he and his staff I learned a lot from from him and and from from there's they have a very level high level of expectation at South Elementary and uh, meeting the needs of their community uh, you should be commended with what you're doing with daycare yeah, yeah, I was going to ask you. I wish Kim was here because she could yeah, talk a lot about that's the daycare. Her pride. We, uh, we're doing well. We uh, received a $10,000 grant at the beginning of the year from Felix C. Martin yeah. to get us going. And right now we're about $2,000 behind. If I take that grant out of the equation, we're running $2,000 behind schedule. So I think by the end of the year, uh, should we fun. should be okay. Yes. We're nervous about the summer. Mm -hmm. We're a little nervous about the summer. We want to stay open because we're afraid uh, we may lose. If we're not open, you know, parents are going to have to find somebody and we don't want to lose anyone. So we're That's one of those reasons parents choose this to begin with. And if you close it in summer, it defeats the purpose. Exactly. And it'll, and we're really, trying to make talk about community support, that program, you know, uh, I try to keep it open in Central City just right. because I know what kind of reaction would it, be, it would be, be you know. Well, for example, we, we when we first started out during fall break, we didn't have enough to make it, and so we lost money. So we sent out a survey for spring break, and we didn't look like we were going to have enough, so we closed for spring break. Um, you know, it's we're not we're not planning on closing for summer right now. And I talked to the director today, and we're going to try to make it work. And even if we, as long as we come out ahead at the end, that's that's what we're shooting for. And if we do need a little help, you have a solid end after the summer. You do have good months. 
Yes. After July, yeah. payment you do have. They're going to be thin. They'll be thin during the summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we hope we have enough in the reserves. Yes. Right now we've got at we've got right at eight thousand in the reserve, counting that grant money. So we we hope we can get through the summer. Stay positive. We will. We've yeah. talked to other um, daycares in the district, mm -hmm. and they're teetering Same back and forth. forth. And so if we if, if one of them were to have to close down, maybe those kids could come to the, the center. That's that's not. <laughs> that's something we've we well, thought about working with the other tough. centers. Well, yeah. I've not heard anything but good stuff. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is that any yeah. uh, Mr. Davis? Is that any kind? if a time does come like that when you're ten line you might have to shut down do you want to keep it open for the community is there a fundraising or anything right like now I think not okay. right now I'm talking uh, at an event yeah. like that obviously uh, it's a big deal and we had to close one and bring it you know right. we Donations. simply were losing we were losing so much money there but I think location maybe hers for the central city was taking a lot of those kids as well but we're pretty spread out now with with the ones we have so right. I, you know hopefully but I, I commend them because I told Mr. Wells, I said, it, it's a lot of work. You don't think it is, but it is. And even as a principal, or you know, it just is. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, but their whole thought was our community needs us to do this. And you heard all the presentations leading up to all the footwork they did. So, you know, that they're not getting anything out of this. They're not making a lot of extra money to buy things. It's just a service to the community. Yes. And uh, so, I, you know, yeah, it's, it's a great thing. And I, again, I commend them for that as well. Oh, yeah, this year will be fine, you know. I was just wondering because one year we did raise some fund for Central City because they, she was ready since that uh, Red Book law came and that year just had to be shut down basically. One of the, the wonderful components of the, the daycare having it there at school is the fact that we have 18 to 20 kids there that are getting ready for school. And when you look at South Elementary, if you look at our data, you will see that our kindergartners are the lowest group of children in the whole district. Uh, their scores are not good. They're not ready for kindergarten in a lot of areas. So this was a way for us to be able to get more children in, sure. get them ready and prepared for school. E even if it's just 18 kids, that's right. still 18 that's kids. It goes back to that whole starfish right. thing. You're making a difference mm -hmm. with one starfish, yeah. throwing it back in the ocean. So this was something that's twofold. Yes, we're helping the community, but we're also helping to prepare our kids. Do parents parent understand this? I don't know. I, I'm I sure know they some do. do. I get, the, you know, right. I use the daycare all the time when I had my three little ones, you know, so it was very convenient. I was thankful. But do everybody understand it's just not a babysitting place? Mm -hmm. I think the ones are in high school for sure. Right. right. They're really grateful for it. Well, because we're all, right. unless you yeah. can't register for kindergarten, I can tell them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, mm -hmm. parents think that it's just a babysitting job or something. Mm -hmm. And we have yes. several kids that yeah. We have several children that just sign up for the play school component of it that, that aren't there all day with us. They're there. They come to play school until 1030 or 11 o'clock and then they leave. So that has been something that that has really, you know, catches our attention for trying to combat that problem of kids not being ready. For do you have a lot of after school kids? Yes. We do. Okay, that's what pretty much keeping you alive. I don't know how many we've got. I don't know what, yeah. how much revenue we're generating, but yeah. You know, with that and your ready for kindergarten numbers going up, that does mm -hmm. so. it, it addresses one of the issues you guys are seeing because they yes. they do have the, the you know the worst numbers you see as far as the kids who are ready going in that they've yes. got a little, which means they've got a little bit more to overcome than maybe some other schools. And, and we this, are open this is to way ideas. To address that. Yes, sir. We we are open to ideas. If there are, we've thought about contacting uh, some of the impoverished regions in eastern Kentucky to see how do they how do they handle incoming uh, five year olds. That aren't ready or how do they target because if we can have early intervention strategies in place now then that's going to help first grade then that's going to help second grade sure. and you're going to grow and you're going to build and and we won't be constantly fighting with 50 percent of our kids in our district that are not ready for their grade level not just kindergarten but their grade level and i think so. there's also something to be said about you know i know that there is a group of 
of parents that just do not have the skills to help their children. Exactly. But I don't know a single parent that I've ever met that doesn't want their child to succeed. Yes, ma'am. So getting that word out there. Yes. Maybe a, to, not, to a mar not, to, not marketing, but some kind of a letter to the parents, you know, what it does by saying, yeah. you know, not just that you, yeah, we take care of your kids, we feed them. Mm -hmm. Besides all that, some kind of explanation uh, to the parents, mm -hmm. you might get 10% better results mm -hmm. you know uh, they'll know that hey you know what yeah they can learn early right. more respect more manners or more concern about their grade level yes sir and I, I feel like in any school system from from any decade that you see when you when you look at kids kids probably weren't prepared when we were all in school mm -hmm. but they battled it they found ways to to impress and, and move forward mm -hmm. we are no different it's just now I, I feel like we're experiencing a cultural shift when kids used to come to school they were fed they had plenty of sleep they were cared for <coughs> and so now we are experiencing a shift to where we are now instead of just focusing on academic success we have to to yep. focus on other successes in other ways sure. we have to parent we have to figure out a way to help these kids reach those Maslow hierarchy of needs before we can do anything else and Miss Kim uh, is not here tonight but we rely on our Family Resource Center more than I can ever say I, I, we cannot do without her in that program it is amazing um, the relationship that she has with our community yeah. is unbelievable yeah. and it, just such a, a pride there when I was in her office it, it looked like a she needs more room in Central City looks like it yes. every time I go. <laughs> well you know you really have two options when, when you're facing what you're facing with the kids not being ready when they get there and it's either what was me look at our numbers poor poor pitiful us right. or how are we going to adapt yeah. to meet and great schools are doing yeah. they're, they're doing, they're doing the ideas uh, very nice they're getting it done and thank you guys for serving on site base because I know what a great site base council how how helpful and nice that is. So I probably uh, can't get Ms. Jordan to say a whole lot. No, very highly paid. Matt disagrees. Job. <laughs> 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 very highly paid yeah. job. Yeah. He was on the board one time. Yeah. Yeah. Worst thing about Stacy having to put up with Matt. That's <laughs> bad. Yeah. We've got four boys that act just like. Yeah. Oh, so you got five, huh? Yeah. Mr. Jones, you got We'll pray for you, Stacey. I just appreciate y'all bringing us in and letting us present everything what we've been doing through the year. Yeah, it's very Thank interesting. It's great to hear you. Appreciate all you're doing. Yeah. Yes, we do. The raise is on the way. Proud of you guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you. If y'all need Good anything stuff. or have any questions, just let us know, okay? Likewise, Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, are we ready to go? Yeah. All right. Uh, Mustang, Nation? Mustang Nation? Mustang Nation? Yeah, yeah. Wow. that's yeah. what I said. Mustang Nation is next. That's right. Well, thank you all very much for uh, allowing us to come before you all today. Uh, before we get started, I do want to uh, introduce my site-based council members to you. Um, you probably remember Mr. Calso uh, from last year. He's our parent representative. And fortunately, slash unfortunately for you, you'll get to see him again at your net at the next one, I believe, because mm -hmm. Greenville uh, goes right after us. <laughs> that worked out well for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jill Stewart, uh, history teacher at the high school. Krista Thompson, our engineering teacher. Bill Bryant, history teacher. And then, of course, myself. Miss Christina Groves could not be here tonight. Um, allergies gotten the best of her voice. And so, or, or that's what she's saying it is. I think she may be in denial, but anyway, she was uh, uh, sorry that she could not be here tonight. Um, just a couple of things, and council members can jump in at any time. Uh, what I've given you are just a couple of talks points uh, to look at as far as overall strengths at the high school as well as areas to grow in and, and some of our needs that we have asked for. The other document that you have uh, in front of you is really hot off the press. We received our ACT scores for our current juniors. They, that was the test that they took back in March. Uh, we received those scores uh, recently uh, during the break and I was able to do some hand calculation. Uh, we are missing our scores from the special ed students. Uh, uh, and that's to be expected because they get a, they receive accommodations and they come in a little later. And then we also have some makeups to make as well. But just as of 
now in comparison to our class of 2019, our current seniors, when they took this same test last year, uh, as of right now, unfortunately, we have gone down in a, a little bit in all the areas, with the exception of science, where we ha have gone up as of right now. And again, these are preliminary, and hopefully my calculating uh, skills are, are well enough on my calculator. So again, continue to uh, have some room for growth there, and really trying to find that magic pill. We have we have um, provided that opportunity for our students to be able to participate in our ACT boot camp um, over the last couple of years, and some of these juniors have been able to participate in that. We also have what's called our success ready time, which is our academic period that we've implemented, and um, have you really utilized that for both our sophomores and juniors. And I really think that this year, with our sophomores having the ability to take the ACT for their first time prior to their junior year, it's about exposure. Ms. Thompson and I were just talking today, it's really about exposure and how much of a difference it is on time tests and it strictly being multiple choice tests. So I'm very grateful that Mr. Perkins was able to find those funds at the board so that we could uh, give that test to our sophomores, which is uh, April the 24th for them. Um, so we are hoping from that that we will see more gains next year when that when they are juniors next year to take that particular test. So Ms. Bumps, as I understand it, as of now, all high school kids will get two free shots. That is correct. As long as the board can keep finding money. Yeah, yes, yes. Hopefully so. We'll have car watches if we need to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids are really excited about it, the sophomores, because I have several in my rotation now that I've talked to and they say, you know, I'm taking dual credit next year and this is this is it. This is my opportunity. If I don't do well now, I'll have to take it in the summer. If and then you know, there's some scheduling issues there because that's what June or July. June. And so they're really excited about it. Even kids. Um, one that was in my first rotation that I've talked about to everyone, who you know, I would say is a knucklehead to use my uh, <laughs> my husband's word. You know, I talked to him and he said, you know, I'm really going to try on this and I'm really going to try to do well. And when we did um, some practice tests in SRT, I said, look, Taylor, at what you've got. I mean, you're rocking like a 26 in reading and you had a 16 on this practice test. You know, you should really do well. And he was really excited to hear that and kind of see um, what his potential was on this test. And I hope that a lot of the kids really see that. That's great. That's good to hear. And we've really try to push as she said the whole ownership piece of it and I really felt like even our current juniors are really um, to, to see the scores it, 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 it's bothered me because I really felt like more of our juniors more than ever this year really bought in and really wanted to try and I really think they did try hard on the assessment but they want to do well because so much can be gained for the number of dual credit classes that our students can take for free not only at a reduced rate but for free before they even graduate our high school is just amazing and the the fact that even beginning next year uh, with our work with Massonville Community College our seniors will we've developed an application process so we have up to 50 seniors um, who, if they that many chooses to fill out the application and pass the necessary guidelines to participate in what we call early college a, a full half day of early college this year we've only done it for uh, two class periods for each each semester throughout the year but next year they they could graduate their senior year with 32 credit hours wow. of college just their senior year which is the which what degree is it called uh, the, they're um, calling it um, gen ed certified thank you it, mm -hmm. the state has passed some legislation that requires colleges to accept this whole package of dual credit um, as awesome. transfer credit so that so. kind of starts a sophomore mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, basically that's awesome. So we're very excited about that. And again, uh, from the not just the free dual credit from the state, because they uh, every student will receive two classes from the state, that, and a lot of them use that their junior year. Um, but if they're one of those kids who happen to be in any CTE dual credit course, career tech ed course, whether it be engineering, 
um, our industrial maintenance classes, which is our welding, automotive, which we're excited we've got Yay. back on the dual career. I'm so <laughs> excited about that. You have no idea. Um, and anything else, so they not only get them free their junior year, they get them again free their senior year because that is the push to the governor. Whereas uh, for many of our kids or, uh, who have already graduated high school, they're just now getting it free by going to that two-year uh, KCTCS, that, that, that local community college or um, technical school. So I'm excited about that for them. And, and again, it's just for any CTE area. And then, of course, as well, the Martin Foundation with the Work Ready Grant. And we've already spoken to Meredith and, and Alyssa to say, look, we may have to uh, differentiate our Work Ready money and that ask for additional funds just for dual credit. And again, just because a student takes dual credit and they ask for assistance for that payment doesn't mean that they automatically get it paid for because we want the kids to have ownership and have them understand that not everything in life is free. Even they could be the, as, as I like to call it, the unfortunate ones that may make just a little bit too much money and not receive any grants mm -hmm. whatsoever. And so they may have to get a loan. So it may be they complete an application. Ms. Fleming and I go through there. We look at the application process and for some they may get all of it paid for but for some they may have to pay $50 or $100. I think the most we've had any of them to pay is $150 if I remember correct. So, but we just want them to see that okay we're going to believe in you to give you this free money. Show us that you really want to do it. And the kids have it, it, there's I can count on one hand when there's been a student that comes say I, can, I can't do the $50 Mm -hmm. And they know that because we find the funds to make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, I know Mr. Carver and I just recently talked, Mr. Carver, I'll let you uh, talk more about it. The uh, recent pretty much reward system that two teachers came to you about that we're going to start with just our freshmen and sophomores coming up. Yeah, this is just kind of in the, in the draft works, but always trying to find ways to to recognize kids and, and really kind of uh, recognize those who uh, may not make straight A's or have perfect attendance, those kids who, you know, may work just as hard just, just to get a seat, uh, or maybe those kids who have, um, you know, maybe those eye twitchers at the beginning of the year behaviorally, and now they... Uh, uh, something has clicked and, and they're motivated maybe that relationship with that teacher teachers have come to me and say hey what can we do for these kids uh, they had some ideas uh, even talking to, to Mr. Blake out there kind of stealing one of his ideas from Greenville Elementary about a positive office referral usually when the kids get sent to the office it's because negative. they've done something negative um, and these are those kids that, that these teachers are thinking about you know they've been sent to the I've sent the same kids to the office early in the year but now they want to send them down for something positive so uh, we're looking at, at doing something to where um, you know Miss Bumps has is, um, offered to help out with some of the, the finances I know Miss Cooper is, is willing to Joe Cooper through food services she's going to um, supply some double doozy cookies you know kind of oh, as yeah. a reward for those know about the yes. Yes. Uh, the chocolate chip cookies with icing in the middle yes. that the kids love they're about this big Around. I make them once a year at my house. <laughs> <laughs> but we have some good news cards that our um, our family resource center has provided, and and uh, again, this is still just in, in the works. I'm, I'm waiting for feedback from them to see if they can have any other ideas to improve it. But um, the idea right now is they jot that little note on that good news card. You give that to that kid, the high school kid, and he comes down and and you know he meets with any principal, gives us an opportunity to talk about that growth area okay what's the difference you know we're proud of you your teacher recognizes that and appreciates that um, and then with that card we initial it sign it whatever then they go through the, the cafeteria line that gets their their free cookie um, a high school kid oftentimes though that good communication if we leave it up to them doesn't get into the, the parents hands so uh, kind of my thoughts or idea was when they collect that um, 
you know, we'll collect them again from the um, from the cashier, and then we'll give them to the uh, RU Service Center, who they've been great to, to mail those home for us. So uh, that's that's kind of in in the plan where we may try to pilot that, see how that works. The last you know seven weeks of school or whatever we have left, and uh, and, and maybe perfect that by next year. Thank you. And a few items I'd like to uh, point out, and then uh, turn it over to you all as well as my council members. One of the things that when we went to visit Marion County uh, High School, we uh, saw in action was their live scoring event. <coughs> we will be hosting our first live scoring event this Wednesday, as a matter of fact, with our current juniors. Um, we have at, we've been able to get subs for all our English teachers, thanks to uh, some monies up here that Mr. Perkins has been able to find uh, from various grants. Um, as well as I know Ms. Stewart's helping with that event and some other teachers and even community members are coming in to meet with juniors one-on-one -on -one to score their on-demand writing prompt and give them immediate feedback there. Uh, following that feedback, we're going to input their scores into a document and then the teachers will, and I mentioned this at our last board meeting, uh, the teachers will then turn around and pretty much do a, a what are the overall weaknesses that they saw across the board with our juniors, reteach those, and then just kind of get them prepped as we get ready uh, to take the K prep assessment for them. So that I'm excited about that. The other thing about one of our school vis visits that was not really planned, it was really an unintentional one, um, myself and uh, Mr. Perkins went to Webster County in looking at how they've implemented the, the second AIT program through Madisonville that we will be implementing next year thanks to a grant uh, that the Martin Foundation has provided through Madisonville and to our school district so Mr. Hughes is excited about that particular program and that once fully implemented those kids will create a guitar it'll be a, a, a out of they'll create it from their own hands so ne next year will be the first year so we won't have any guitars next year but the following year uh, in 2021 we should begin to see a lot of those kids to be able to do that um, and again just a, that that particular implementation of that will also permit Mr. McEwen, our, our electricity teacher, to also use some of those same Amatrol modules that we'll be yeah. getting to use for that too. So he's just as excited as, as anyone else. And again, all those are dual credit classes. We've really upped our game on positive contacts and, and dealing what Mr. Carver said with all of our staff members this year and just reaching out to home, whether it be an email, a conversation in the grocery, a phone call, a note home. I mean, our youth service center cannot speak enough about Miss Rice and Miss Sutherland, how much of a help they have been for us this year in trying to get these positive comments home. And I uh, feel like that that's really helped us out some because I know Mr. Davis has made uh, comments on and off about how, knock on wood, it seems that our suspensions uh, are down this year. And we're hoping that some of that is attributed through that. And then one thing that we have coming up on April 17th is our book, Lindsay. We, uh, we were able to steal as I like to say, Jennifer Hardison from Mr. Lyle, um, as he has stolen many good ones from me, might I add, uh, to this school. But um, we have Miss Hardison, and with her, uh, we were able to get up the uh, book frenzy, where the students select a book, the staff select a book, and read with the kids. And now it's getting to be there's too many staff members and not enough kids, but we're just as excited about it um, because it's just a time for us to stay after school. We feed the kids. There's prizes for the kids, and we act like fools because we might win a whole pack of Sharpies out of it, but there's prizes for the adults too. And I think the kids really enjoy just having the time to sit and talk about a book, whether it be, um, mine this time is called Sadie. I know we've had uh, some John Gordon books. I know Mr. Carver's done. Ms. Thompson, you've done a, a couple. Um, doing five, five feet apart right now. Okay. Kylie has that book. Um, She's really the Fellowship of the Ring. Fellowship of the Ring. Mm -hmm. Are you doing one? I couldn't remember, so okay. But various ones are doing it so we're continuing to really push how important reading is and we feel like the more that our kids are reading and then if anything even our staff members are starting to read more mm -hmm. things to really be able to uh, relate to our students as well so we're very excited about that and that is just right around the corner 
My daughter, speaking of the book frenzy, she was an avid reader in middle school, and then she got to high school, and that kind of fell off, as I think it does a lot. So I've really appreciated the book frenzy because it's it's gotten a book back in her hand and excited about reading and having those conversations with teachers that she might not have in class, mm -hmm. building those relationships that are going to carry over when she moves to West next year, and just different things that she's got going on with the book frenzy. I just really, as a parent, I appreciate that because it's really, you know, it's gotten a book back in Kylie's mm -hmm. hand, and, and I don't know if that would have happened without some of that initiative from, from the staff. So I, I, I know Miss Groves and I both really appreciate that aspect of it. And that's just something, again, teachers are doing this above and beyond. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not part of any pay scale or anything. They're just doing it for kids. And I, I don't think that's recognized enough. But it's because they care about, you know, the kids they're working with. So, you know, I, I appreciate that. Yes. And last, but certainly not least, our matter of taste. I don't know if you've heard about this or not, but this is probably one of the things that I've been very excited about this year. Um, with our three uh, fundamentally and mentally disabled units, our three uh, major special ed units, they too have to show where they're college and career ready, they're transition ready. Uh, one way to do that is to show that they have working skills. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to uh, purchase a time clock where they punch in a out they have uh, our family youth service center again able to help with the shoes and black pants uh, I was able to help with some of the shirts and these kids they go around and they take the orders from uh, the high school members they even come up here to the board and do it they once the food uh, is ready and that's prepared at school thanks to mr. Cronin and hit a lot of his students working with that same group of students in cooking they prepare the food they bag it up and they deliver the food and collect the money and um, that has really been just an awesome Awesome. Thank God. <laughs> to watch the kids come to your room. I mean, they are so excited and so proud. And but there was one little boy. He said, "Okay, Miss Thompson, what can I put you down for?" <laughs> Not, you know, do you? What can I? Yeah. <laughs> you can't. Absolutely can't deny them. I mean, it's they're sure. you know, fantastic. They can deliver to me <laughs> any day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Council members or board members, what do you have for, for us? I circled the matter of taste because I wanted to know more about that. Um, I wrote several notes here. I love that the guitars are going to be made on campus because there's just not enough there's not enough teaching of the old arts and crafts ways, hand making things. That's so important. I'm really happy to hear the automotive shop is coming back. That's awesome. I thought I had a car I could donate, but it's one year out of date. You sure you don't want it? I'll, I'm sure he can use it for just <laughs> regular things, I'm sure. So definitely Mr. Wister is not going to be picky. It's just that for the, uh, the the dual credit piece of it has to be the 85 or more. But, okay. you know, I mean, he can he can always use it as a teaching tool at any time. All right. So. Good deal then. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I love the information about the relationships between the teachers and the students. Um, you all know I'm, I'm a former educator, so I know how important that is. So thank you for working on that, especially at the high school level. I know it's not always easy to get some of them to come out of the shells, but so, so important. Thank you. And something I want to brag on, on about uh, the high school is what they've done with soft skills. You hear it every event they have. I'll go around and I'll ask the vendors or the, whoever it may be working with the kids, what are you seeing? I'm hearing it out in the public. I mean, there's absolutely a difference. Not that they were bad before. I'm not saying that. But there's a difference. And I think it's just, open. It's just uh, there's an expectation now. It's talked about a little more. And the kids are rising to the level. Not all of them. They're not, we're not perfect and never will be. But, I mean, you go there and you watch them uh, either in assemblies. I was so impressed with the last assembly, the, the behavior there. And, and I'm in the hallway. And, you know, often they stop and shake my hand and look you in the eye. And, you know, those are things that are going to get them a job. Mm -hmm. And it's going to get them into college. It's, you know, and I think you've done a good job of letting kids understand. Because you know, it's hard to sell a high school kid on anything. And helping them understand, this is good for you. I don't care what you're going into. Whether you're going to work in a lumber yard, being a welder, or going to Harvard still got these are skills that are going to help you and I am seeing a difference and and I and I'm hearing a difference and I very much appreciate what you're doing there it's noticed 
Thank you. And it's not easy. We know it's not easy. And hopefully this will get easier as we're doing this district wide. Yeah. You know, as we're all talking it more, they're going to come into high school and have that heard that. Right. Right. Just be the norm. Yeah. Yes. It will be. Yeah. Yes. We've got a real live example. Of, it's another part of the state. One of our branches. They were doing an interview, and literally the body language was what because they sat there like that. I mean, that's what they all said. It was just immediate turn off. So. Yeah. In first impressions, they really quickly tell you. You talked about that. Yeah. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get that implemented this. Year. Ricky Hernandez and I really worked hard and it just it seemed like schedules didn't work and, and so forth so but <clears throat> next year that is going to be our primary goal to where uh, Madisonville currently hosts a first impressions day where they work with students there at the college of how you walk into the interview for the first and they don't say anything to them they just watch the kids walking in if they've got their heads down or their slouch down that that's that's the first impression overall so uh, Brittany and I are very excited about how we can implement that next year and it may be how we look at trying to do a little twist on our college and career fair day that we've done it the same way so many years um, and then of course recently in the news um, I'm, some of you may have seen it but I've had some community members reach out to me um, I forgot what bullet East High School called it but it was essentially adulting day <laughs> where they held sessions on um, you know helping kids set up the, their checking account and what we're finding when we start having these conversations with the kids we're waiting too late because by their junior and senior year, many of them either have a job or they have a checking account. So we've got to find ways to get them to that freshman and sophomore level year. And I know Mr. Bryant's tried to do that some during his SRT time and working with some of those kids. But maybe trying to find some of those adulting days, <coughs> what they need to know, mm -hmm. the basic checking the oil, <laughs> how to wash laundry. Uh, Mr. Hughes and I. We're learning uh, that at my house right now. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Mr. Hughes and I showed this with uh, Mr. All Davis. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, one day that um, I was passing through and Ken said, I, uh, he said, Ms. Bumps, I, I just had to take a break one day from teaching what we were doing out in the shop. I said, okay. And he said, we were just talking about starching clothes. And so he was explaining how he starched and the kids looked at him. They had never heard. Mm -hmm. What do you mean starching clothes? And he said, those are things that I take for granted that our kids know how to mm -hmm. iron and know what starching is. And so they did a stop, drop, and roll, how to polish shoes, how to starch awesome. clothes, and, and everything. So it, those are things that we have to remind ourselves that while all of us in here may have been taught that when we were growing up, that's not how it is anymore. So we've got to be more intentional about it. So our our definite goal next year is to implement a First Impressions Day. Community members, all of you all, there will be a day, I will be calling upon you all to come in and help out with that day because Brittany Hernandez, who's been a huge asset to us, for Madisonville. Um, she and I are in it, Dwayne, and we really want to make that happen next year. I'll bring my lint rollers and sweater shavers. And those <laughs> are very much of a huge yes. very much I think so. it's really important, though. I mean, you mentioned the checking account. Yeah. I mean, I know. I, I learned at an early age. My mom was a banker, so I knew how to balance a checkbook, and um, I don't know why I waited two months to do mine until today, but that's just beside the point. But a lot of kids, you know, don't, they don't understand that, you know. And, of course, most of your employers now, you know, they offer or even make you have an account open so you do direct deposit. So yes. if any kids are getting jobs out of high school, whether, you know, no matter where it's at, you know, they need to know, you know, the debit and the credit yes. portion of that account and how to manage that, yeah. you know. They don't know or if they still have it. checks, it doesn't mean they have money, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. That's right. We'll see this well, yes. something else that I know you started doing, you're talking about doing more as you, as you have that kind of meeting with all the kind of the tech ed folks at the end of the year is reaching out to some community members and saying what do you need from our kids you're not getting mm -hmm. and so you know I, I know that's kind of the initial stages but I think that's great we've already started getting a lot of that feedback already so it's been great one of the things what that I, the number two thing that I would like to get started for next year and this will probably be more so summer planning than anything is I really want to and Mr. Davis and I talked about this last summer but I really want to get the community and help Helping us really set up what does a graduation profile look like for every kid mm -hmm. so that what do they, what do we want to make sure that they know how to do 
when they leave us and that's what we're seeing a lot of other schools really get into and some are just now beginning the stages so um, again it, it goes along with the feedback that we're getting from community members but also what's kind of that and you hate to get to a point where it's a checklist but what's kind of a checklist of things that we want to see that our kids can be able to do when they graduate in high school and how it will look well, I love how you're working with the community. I mean, your Facebook post and all the, the positivity through there, I think that means well, uh, you're, so much. You're singing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, oh, that's a wrong show. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I wish I'd never world. done that now. But, yeah. uh, I appreciate that because we really have tried to up our communication a, a, a great deal. But And I do feel like that our community members have been in more this year than ever. And that, it, because it seems that we have the mental tours so much at the elementary and, and and you still kind of see them at the middle school but when they get to the high school our kids don't even want their parents in there mm -hmm. uh, many of you know that yep. from, from your own children yep. um, so if at least we can get the community in there more um, then I feel like that we have at least try to get some mentoring still in there and it's still not the one-on-one -on -one, but it, it, just even the Kevin Reeds of the world yep. who come in during lunch mm -hmm. and pick and prod at the kids it's, they, it's just nice to see them just to come in during lunchtime just to talk to them and it, 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 it makes a huge difference so I appreciate you saying that and we're always looking at ways of how we can continue to open that for our community to come in too. I want to commend you on your attendance policy for graduation. Yes, ma'am. I found out when this all came up, I was talking to a friend of mine about what was going on, and he informed me that that's what cost me a job at TVA when I got out of school. I, tried, I begged for a job out there and couldn't get one. And I just found out about uh, probably two or three months ago that that's the reason why I didn't get it, because I skipped school 28 days my senior year. And that's that's what they looked at. I appreciate, and that's the this council. I, I mean, this council and the councils before. I mean, it's it, it's them who help. You know, we come to them with an idea, and we want them to definitely support it. So I appreciate you saying that because that just uh, affirms what they're doing. I think it's a great thing. And I know you took some heat. Yes. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm, 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 I mean, obviously, I mean, we we always seem like mm -hmm. we take heat for, but you did it for what you thought was best that's for right. the kids. And when you stand up and you do it. Uh, what you think is for the kids, and I believe it is, mm -hmm. and you take a little heat and you, st and you stand fast because that's what you think is best. I respect that. Yeah. I talked to a lady today in Bowling Green. She said their school is five days. Yeah. Well, I was at Operation Preparation at the middle school last week, and I told every child that met with me, I'm a future employer, hopefully very soon, and the one thing I will look at is your high school transcript, because if you can't go to school, then you're not going to work for me. And they all just kind of sat back and looked at me. I said, I'm not kidding. I'll look at how many days you missed. I'll look at your grades a little bit, but I want to know if you're going to show up to work every day. And we're really starting to see an impact of that uh, this year, even as we have begun scheduling with our current juniors who will be seniors. A lot of them have really looked forward to co-op. And, you know, our guidelines for co-op are even more so strict than what they are for prom and graduation. And some kids, unfortunately, have, for lack of a better way of saying it, have gotten a, a, a rude awakening because all this time their freshman year, they've looked forward to co-op mm -hmm. and now they yeah. can't. Right. Now, obviously, if they had, if they've had the flu or some yeah. kind of major thing, and we look at those kids individually, but if if they're repeatedly sick for no reason mm -hmm. and they're continually to have unexcused absences, our co-op teachers, are, which are career tech ed teachers, they mm -hmm. cannot see themselves putting themselves out there yeah. for those kids. That's if right. the kids can't even show them that they're going to come to school, mm -hmm. so that has been huge this year, and I think next year that we're getting out will. Mm -hmm. And be more so yeah, absolutely the years to come I think so thank little you bit for better. that thank you thank you for coming thank you yes. thank you thank you for serving thank on you the council God. that's yeah. right. thank you, not easy yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank Enjoy you. Y'all ready? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jones, we'll turn it over to you. Okay. okay. Um, I'll start off with introductions with our parent members on site base. We have new member this year, and I, I, you know, assured her that when she heard her husband talk about all oh, the board presentations, he always told her how horrible that was. You know, I assured her that that was not that everybody is very nice. And 
and <laughs> very supportive. <laughs> so this is Candace Lyle. Uh, we won't yeah. hold any grudges on who she's married to. But, uh, that's Candace. So this is her first year on site base. And then we have Miss Angie McPherson, who is parent member of site base and PTSO president. Mr. Adams, Matt Adams teaches fifth grade. Mr. Calso uh, is fourth grade teacher. Mr. Blake is assistant principal. And Miss Bogus, who sometimes I could maybe, we're not related at all, but sometimes she does get confused for being me, so I kind of could use that every now and then. Uh, this is Miss Bogus, and she teaches first grade. So um, I do want to start off by saying, since we mentioned what happened last night, is, and I wasn't planning on saying this, but definitely when events happen like what we had last night is not only does our staff pull together, I think it's a good example of when something happens, we pull together to help each other out or make other plans and we have to be flexible. And, you know, I kind of thought, well, it's going to rain today. The kids won't miss the playground. Well, then the sun popped out. And it was beautiful. Um, so pulling together. But then community members had a community member come in today out and said, and a local business owner that has helped out in the past, but said, I'll come and do exercises with the kids on the tennis court oh, yeah. for a few minutes. So that is a perfect That's example awesome. of what a great school community we have. But um, I am going to start out with K prep scores. And again, I'm, I know you all have seen those. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, and I can answer any questions that you have. Um, it's no secret we were labeled as a TSI school this year. But in saying that, what I want to focus on, when we met, Mr. Davis was in the meeting, and when Miss Bumps and I met with the gentleman from the state, uh, Miss Curtis Higgins, he came in this room. And when I entered the room, he said, listen, he said, to have the achievement scores in reading and math that your school has, you all are doing a lot of right things. And so that was reassuring for me to hear that. And we all have talked about that we've got a lot of good things going on that we just want to continue continue and of course always looking for ways to improve uh, but that definitely was reassuring to hear that from someone who represented the state mm -hmm. and so we are we're very pleased and very proud of the gains that our students are making in reading and math uh, we definitely social studies has always also been a, a stronger area uh, for us it's it's definitely not one of our weak areas but it is very important to point out that we were only TSI in one category, which was it was our students with IEPs, Individualized Education Plans, and other academic, separate academic indicator, which is not reading and not math. So that was, I thought, very impressive. That mean, means that all of our students, including our students with special needs, are performing in reading and math. So our areas of focus for this year were definitely science. Science was new last year. We didn't even know that we were going to be tested until late. So we're definitely focusing a lot on science and writing, but I'm going to let Mr. Calso talk about, he's the science, one of the science teachers, so I want him to be able to talk about what changes we've made in science. Well, obviously when we got the science course back this year, it wasn't what we wanted. Uh, so Ms. Ramsey, myself, Mr. Blake, and Ms. Jones, we kind of all talked about different ways that we can improve our science scores. The next generation science standards are not solely just fourth grade standards any longer. I mean, these things are taught from kindergarten all the way through fifth grade. and So it really does take an entire school to teach science. Now, even though it's assessed in fourth grade, it takes it, all of us. And so we're doing some things with mystery science, which is a lot of hands-on activities. Uh, they have created some assessments this year that go along with those. They're new. Uh, Ms. Ramsey and I have started uh, implementing those, giving those to the students, and we're really impressed with some of the responses that we're getting. It uh, really shows us that they're understanding the material. And they're even getting some of that, they're exposed to it in second, third, first grade. And, and some of the things that they're supposed to know coming into fourth grade, we're seeing that they're able to go back and, and, and remember that and, and tap into that knowledge. So we're using mystery science, 
we have in the past, we haven't always done the assessment piece, uh, but they just reworked that and we're really excited about that and we really like the responses that we're getting. Generation Genius is kind of uh, Bill Nye for this generation of kids. Uh, it's, a, it's a gentleman that is nationally renowned. He is a scientist. He has put together some videos over all subject content areas for fourth grade students. And at the end of the videos, we take a Kahoot quiz. I don't know if any of you have ever had a student that's ever played Kahoot, but it's a it's a web-based game of questions. And it, they're scored based on their response and how timely they put that response in. And so we're blessed at Greenville to have so much technology. We just got a couple more laptop cards, which I'm sure Ms. Jones will talk about. But we're able to play that game with the kids. So we're able to watch this video and see if they're able to apply that knowledge to questions that they're going to see again in the future. So we're really excited about that. Uh, we also worked with South Elementary. Uh, I was able to go over to one of their science nights and, and collaborate with their staff there, their science teachers, just to kind of see what they're doing there. Uh, we feel it's always important to collaborate with the schools in the county. Uh, anytime, you know, we, we truly feel if we're doing something good at Greenville, we want to share it. And, and so uh, working with them, seeing their scores, I went over there. And one of the things that they do is they have the Elevate Science materials. And so we are able to pilot that the second part of this year. Uh, Ms. Ramsey and I have really enjoyed that material. And, and it made us feel good that we, are, we have covered all the things that are in the book, even though we didn't really have a textbook per se. Um, but it's a good supplemental material. It's a good review for us. And we'll see how that goes in the future. But we're really excited about the assessment piece of that. So really trying to step our game up in science and, and trying to use all the resources we have in the district you know, to help us. Because we, we really truly do believe we all are family. We're all together no matter what school we're at. So I appreciate the other schools being willing to share what they're doing. Because sometimes as teachers we get selfish and we don't want to share. You know, it's, it's ours. But uh, the best ideas are always stolen. So we should always be happy when somebody else, you know, takes one of our ideas. So uh, that, that's kind of where we're at with science. We're hoping, we're hoping this year that it, it's a, we know it's going to be better this year. I, I can say that confidently. It's going to be a whole lot better. Like. Okay. Uh, Ms. Jones asked me to speak about engagement and basically school culture, and so I'm going to focus on how that uh, reflects with our students and our staff. And so I'm just going to, you have a list in front of you, so I'm not going to talk about all of them because some of them are self-explanatory, but one that I'm especially proud of is the positive office referrals. Uh, I did reference that last year, if you remember. Uh, but that's something that where if a teacher recognizes that a student is doing something exceptional that day, then they can just send an email. We have a form, but it's an electronic form if they choose to fill it out that way. They can email it to me or they can print it out and put it in my box. Miss Jones and I both sign it and then one of us, uh, or both of us, will call the student down. We'll you know, give them that, that immediate praise and recognition from us. They get a sticker. Uh, in the past we made phone calls. That that's kind of depends on the time. And then uh, we send it home to the student. And, and I think that's great because it gets the, the students feel good. It shows the parents that we're recognizing their children. And then another good thing about it is some Sometimes those get put on Facebook, and so then the community at large can see see the things we've done. Mr. Davis was uh, with me one day when I called a student down, so he was able to to brag on the all smiles with us as well. <laughs> all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that that's one of my favorite things we do, where we you know just recognize the the kids and, and lift them up, lift their spirits. Uh, a few other things, student recognitions. That that's something I want to touch on, and we do this constantly. But a few things in particular that we do uh, is we recognize our Blackhawks of the month. So each classroom uh, picks a, a student that is their student of the month. And so we recognize them. We recognize them uh, at the assembly, you know, call the name, call them out in front of the whole school, get a picture of them, put that in the paper. Um, Any kind of students involved in an activity, whether that be in school, maybe a club or out of school, like if they're involved in, you know, we had a student recently who was involved with the swim team and got to compete at, you know, uh, state championship. Yeah, state mm -hmm. championship. He got to go to Indianapolis and compete. That. So we recognize him. Students that are on our academic team, we call them down and, and you know really praise them in front of the whole school as well. Uh, students who uh, maybe show leadership qualities, we recognize them either in announcements or in the assemblies as well. And students.
students who, you know, soft skills has been our big focus for the past couple of years. And so anytime a student shows exceptional soft skills, then we make sure to recognize them. Uh, they, they get recognized on the announcements or in the assembly. We also give them what we call the Black Hawk Cafe, which is just a, it's a big reward. They get to watch TV and eat lunch with their friends. That's something that they really enjoy as well. So that, those are a few things that we do that, I mean, I could sit here and talk for the rest of the evening about how we recognize them that way. Uh, if you go on down, a new thing that we've started this year is called, called the Principal's List. And I know that's not new, but it's something that we've really put a focus on is recognizing those students who make all A's. We put their names on, on a poster and we, we recognize them uh, in front of the school as well. Like the Dean's List in course. Yes, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. like that. Uh, we have what we call the Breakfast Club. It's where students who need help with homework, uh, they can come in. We have some classified staff who are in there to, to give them assistance. We also have some technology going so they can do Lexia, Reading Plus, they can do Exact Path. Um, you know, just get in there and, and have that extra time working on those skills. So that's something that we just started this year and it's really, I think, a really positive thing that we're doing. Um, really, really happy with that. Uh, and then the huge hallway event calendar. If you have been to our school recently, right as you walk in on one of the walls, uh, there's a, a calendar displayed and it has the students' birthdays, it has staff birthdays, it has events that are going on in our school like, you know, hat day or, uh, you know, holidays if we have no school, anything like that. And the kids, it's always fun to watch them as they walk by because if it's their birthday month then they, they're really excited to make sure that we see their name on the calendar. Uh, so that, those are just a few things that we do. Club days are on there. And when it, in referencing the staff culture, uh, you know, you, you've got this list here in front of you. And one thing is, uh, you know, we have the, the value of the staff input. That's something that we, that we really value. Every staff member is on a committee or a team where they have input, calendar, or leadership, or the other ones. Uh, plus, we also send out, the teachers kind of make fun of me because I, I do a lot of Google Docs. But, you know, I'll send out a Google Doc and we'll ask for teachers' input on, you know, is this a resource that you think is beneficial for us or is this something you would like to, to see in, in the future? They just, you know, type on type a few things, click on it, and then we have all that data coming to us from all the teachers at the same time. Um, and so if, if there's anything in those two sections, uh, I'll be happy to address. I just want to jump in and say, as I've said with some other schools, but it's certainly true. Uh, there are kids there, the soft skills are really good. I mean, they are sweet. They are, it's a friendly school. Uh, and they're starting to learn my name, which makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> makes me happy. And uh, But they'll look you in the eye, they'll smile at you. And if you ever shake hands with one, by golly, everybody in that line. Yeah. Uh, yes. You know, but they are, it's, it, it's evident that soft skills has been talked about. Not that they weren't sweet last year. Absolutely they were. But there's a, just a different level, as I've said. You can tell that they talk it, they expect it, they they uh, reward it, you know, acknowledge it. So, you know, I do want to commend, commend. It's always nice going into Greenville and uh, and getting to see the kids there and the way they respond. Okay. I, I want to jump in here as well, yeah. um, all of you, to see the school culture with students, staff, and families listed. That's a, that's a really big deal to me. So you're including not just the kids, the culture that they are in, but it's everyone. Mm -hmm. And it it turns out not to be just you all, but the next school and the next school and then the whole community. So, Mr. Davis, thank you for the culture program or whatever you want to call it, but it's it's been amazing. It definitely has. Mm -hmm. Else? What's a Monday morning prayer circle? Uh, we just have a group of teachers who, if they would like to come down. That's just, before school yeah, starts. Yeah, before school starts. Mm -hmm. But if they want to come down before school and just share things that are going on that they can, and then the staff pray with one another. Before we open the doors for mm -hmm. students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happens if a student wants to join you? Well, it's before students are in the building. Yes, now that we have FCA that we offer for third, yeah. fourth, and fifth grade students, yeah. and that is twice a month on Thursdays. Yeah. And you would be amazed at the number of students that, and I have to give a shout out. We had a student last mm -hmm. week that led that, a fifth grade student That's a big that point to me with reason led why. FCA. Wow. Reason yeah. why, because out of all the countries, you know, every country look up to America mm -hmm. and America don't have prayers at mm -hmm. school. And the poorest country
people you don't have shoes on, the first thing they're standing in line before they say hello to anybody, they're standing in line waiting for prayers to start. Mm -hmm. That's the reason, you know, I wish a, school, a student body starts a group of their own. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and that's join when... Me, join me, join me, and join me, and, you know... And it's, it is very Somebody, rewarding to see the students lead that. Uh, if somehow, you know, a student body can say, join me, join me, and start from 1 to 10 mm -hmm. to 20, and that's not against the law, by the way. Mm -hmm. I found that out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Know, uh, I was super impressed with the fifth grader last year. It was year. amazing. I stepped into FCA, and I, just to see him lead it, I mean, it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. to, to, and that's a soft skill, getting up and yes. speaking in front of his peers. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that young age, I could have never thought about it doing that at that age but I was just really impressed and he was a fifth grader so everybody's looking up to him and he's mm -hmm. one that you know he's this he's usually a jokester and really funny but man he got in there and I was just really proud of proud of him for that all right and I think Miss uh, Lau and Miss Angie actually is going to go first well Miss Jones asked me to speak on my uh, <laughs> this is my area PTSO uh, our fundraisers and field trips uh, we have a great PTSO team um, at Greenville. Uh, we have a volunteer program that's set up through our Family Resource Center. Sally Washington does a wonderful job yeah. helping the PTSO with this program. She actually this year developed a, a sign-up area next to her office. So if you come in, you can go next to her office and it is uh, job postings for volunteers. Um, and you'll say things like, you know, the book fair is coming up. You can sign up for the book fair. You can sign up for Santa's workshop. Um, I'm ready for kindergarten. Mm -hmm. All kinds mm -hmm. of the dental, the dental fall festival, and so each month she puts up new jobs. We do post those on our Facebook page, you know, letting everybody know those are up. She also has next to that um, a thank you section, you know, so she thanks our volunteers and she has pictures up of some of our volunteers doing that. So she plays a big part. She helps me a lot. Uh, we work together on that. Um, some of the fundraisers our PTSO does is we do our annual fall festival. If you haven't been, you need to go. <laughs> um, our parents, our teachers, our community, and all this make this like a huge success. Um, our goal is always we donate. We want to get as many donations as possible to keep our expenses down. Uh, this year we had a rock wall. We always have inflatables. We had pony rides, the jail, goldfish races. Uh, all these other games it becomes a big event uh, we usually gross about 8,000 on that you know tickets I'm talking of ticket sales and food sales and everything together uh, this year we bargained with our teachers or I did Miss Jones did that <laughs> if you worked usually they'll do a money maker uh, booth but we tell them we said this year if you just work for me and you work a certain amount of time I'll give you so much of you know the profit so this year they got $180 each for the classrooms mm -hmm. and these are your classroom teachers that got that's very nice yeah mm -hmm. that's good. Very good. so um, okay. another fundraiser we did and we included this in our fall festival was our t-shirt sales we had a couple local people businesses design some t-shirts for us and we sold those so if you're Greenville alumni some of those shirts you know are just for any black hawk it doesn't matter if it's elementary or what, it's for anybody. So we've sewed those. Uh, Paragon, most of you have always heard of Paragon. Uh, that's another one we do. It's for students to sell different items out of booklets. Uh, we usually receive like approximately 40% of non-perishable items and we get 40% profit, I mean 30% profit off of the perishable items. And this is a bit, uh, the reason we use Paragon so much, a lot of people are like, why do y'all use that? They do all the leg work. I mean, they uh, do the kickoff assembly, they process the orders, they organize. The day of delivery, they set it all up for me. All I have to do is go in and make sure somebody's there when we're handing them out. They count all the money, they bring these little old ladies. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they are. <laughs> <laughs> they're good. They, yeah, because 
because if you're off, they know it, you know. And so, uh, <laughs> but they also provide us uh, like three inflatables twice a year, free. Yeah. So we use those. That's some of our. Uh, we get that donated to fall festival, so that's not an expense we have there. Uh, this year we did a fundraiser where me and Miss Jones was a little bit hesitant. We've been hesitant to do this for a while, but we did the world's finest chocolate sales. Um, we were hesitant because it's such a popular fundraiser. Everybody does it. You see it a lot. But I got with Robin at Brandon, like he said, we. Uh, I used some of my resources out there and uh, got with Robin and talked to her about what's the best way to do this and uh, it was a lot of hard work <laughs> and a long, long hours but it paid off. Uh, we made over about 14000 Wow. Those chocolates will never go away. Yeah. Yeah. You might think that I everybody... Know how much we sold in chocolate. Yeah. That's no, that's the, that's the yeah. profit. That's the yeah. profit. That was yeah. profit. That's, you that's know. awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. tell them what we use, that mo use the money for. So Mr. Evans? that money that we got, uh, we purchased 50 Chromebooks for the school. Oh. And we got two computer charging cards with that money. And uh, the primary and intermediate classroom that sold the most we gave each one of them so there was two classrooms we gave each one of them a Chromebook for being the top sellers at the school so Miss Jones come up with the little slogan, the slogan uh, chocolate equals computer so <laughs> that's how we're going to kind of market that to our families to let them know where the money's going and stuff and we've always GS ever since I have been there and I'm sure Candace is always focused on PTSO raising money for field trips mm -hmm. now we still raise money for a student instructional needs uh, we raise money for uh, you know we playground equipment you know, <laughs> new playground yeah. equipment yeah. Yeah. now you'll get a new one <laughs> 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 several uh, three years ago a rock wall for mr browning uh, we were able to buy this year some accessories to go with that to give the kids some challenge but we pay when we do field trips a lot of people are like well okay but we pay for their tickets admission fee if there is one we pay for their meals and transportation um, I love it some like fourth and fifth grade these last couple years have got two field trips because they're and these are educational field trips some examples is like Angel Mounds you know that's a historical side of the Native, Native Americans but that correlates with their social studies right at the beginning of the year and then the Frankfurt trips come up. Uh, that's another big one. They visit the Kentucky State Capitol, the Kentucky History Museum, the Governor's Mansion. And this correlates again to their studies. Um, it also helps them understand the state's government and stuff. Fourth grade trip went this year, the year, last year my daughter got to go uh, to the Louisville Zoo. Now not only did they get to go to the zoo, but they divided them up into groups. They gave, gave each one of those groups a guide. They Each kid had their clipboard and pencils and papers. They had to document and observe the animals and listen to the guide. It was a wonderful, you know, it was one Now, there was some grants involved in that yeah, at that time, some, yes. too. But still, we paid for that on a lot of things. At third grade, they're fixing to go on Lost River Cave, where they're going to learn about geology and the wetlands and stuff like that. So, field trips, they cost a lot of money. You know, the buses, the meals. Uh, so, the Frankfurt trip, just to give you an idea, is about $2,000 you know for our kids to go and that's your admission and your meals included so you know we use our money sometimes differently than some of the other ptso's but definitely when you leave greenwell elementary when you say i've been on a field trip you've been on a field trip you've been out of the county and you've been on a field trip so uh not just documented <laughs> and then uh I was trying to think that we look a few other things. Uh, I guess that's about it. I mean, we have. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> the other thing was is uh, we, we paid for the kids to go to the movies. We paid the buses for the kids to go to the movies. So instead of a Christmas party, 
we went to see the Grinch. Which I will add, everybody thought we were crazy for that. That was one of the best trips ever. The kids, it was, and the kids and that had never been to the movies. That was really the good. The Madisonville Theater pulled me and some others aside and told me we were probably one of the best schools they had ever had. That's awesome. They were the most well-behaved kids. You were the most organized. Um, you know, we didn't look like it. <laughs> But you were very organized. Yeah, and so, uh, other thing is, is our PTSO pays for uh, field trip t shirts. That's Mr. good. Mr. Uh, Adam safety Bob, thing. Mm -hmm. safety about that. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, finally, uh, a teacher, Mr. Adams, actually told me a couple parents told him that if it wasn't for this funding for these field trips, the kids over. wouldn't be, a lot of kids wouldn't be. The the be going over. So, it takes a lot of people to have a, a successful PTSO, and I feel like GS is blessed with. Mm -hmm. Teachers, staff, the students, prayer. parents. That prayer helps. That's right. No. That's right. Mr. I Blake agree. and especially Miss Jones for uh, always sticking by my side even when I fail. You know, uh, or, or when I, I, know, I don't fail. <laughs> no, I never <laughs> fail. No. But, uh, <laughs> You know, she always steps out there and says, all right, if you want to try it, and she's always oh. willing to help me uh, try different things. Uh, so we're, we're very blessed to agree. When I agree with you, it's probably the prayer and the godliness mm -hmm. in that school that gets us where we're at. So mm -hmm. Candace is going to talk briefly about yeah, communication. You can talk all about your husband. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I had to stand front and center and give this big long speech. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he said? Is that what he said? Next time we'll make him stand. Next time we'll make him stand and do it. Don't worry. Right here, right, right in the middle. Just <laughs> Don't be recording her. <laughs> I just want to briefly talk about uh, parent communication. I've had children attending Greenville uh, between my three kids for the last 12 years. So I feel like it's a great school and um, there's nothing worse than being an uninformed parent. And yes. Greenville does a great job. Um, they, they send out reminds through apps, uh, family resource, PTSO, and the school have newsletters that tell about upcoming events and <laughs> important reminders and things like that. Um, so that's through paper form, written form. And uh, the school messenger, which is by phone. So there's multiple ways that they're, they're sharing I information. I see y'all do Classroom Dojo. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's Classroom good Dojo is wonderful. Yes. If you don't know what that is, uh, it's a point system. In fact, I have a message on my phone right now from the teacher. Oh, I do too. So, <laughs> it it's easy to message and yes. message back and forth with the teacher. The teacher sends pictures of what your, your child is doing during the day. Um, you know, if your child's behaving, yep. you know, they get points for um, good behavior and positive choices that you make. So I feel like I know what's going on in my child's day. And a bit, I've only had um, kids doing this for the last two years, the teachers that they had, and I love it. Um, it may sound silly, but first day I get a picture and I just feel so relieved sure. just to see that picture. So. Yes. And they also, um, Riley and the teacher, my, the, my daughter's uh, teacher this year did um, digital portfolios of each child. So I would get one that said Riley and, and pictures specifically of her that maybe the other classroom kids' parents couldn't see. Mm -hmm. Maybe something she did that was funny or something that she did that was good. But then there are also um, pictures that are shared to the whole classroom. And you can like it or make a comment underneath the picture. So, so between the classroom dojo and the parent reminds and newsletters and messenger, um, I don't think any parent could walk away from our school and say they're not informed or they don't have a clue about what's going on. Um, they just do a fantastic job. How the parent involvement from parent side, do they come to the events, come to the, mm -hmm. is it 
Getting Very better. Is it getting better? Yes. Oh, third grade night. We had over 300. Are you uh, yes, and it, you know, we had an author there, so we invited the whole school. But we did a wax museum, and it was it was over 300. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Just the first grade night. And, and the first was, grade night was amazing. It was yeah. how many would you say? I don't know. It was over. Close to uh -huh. 200, that's 250 yeah. or two. That's a big challenge. We had a lot of first grade. Yeah. That's a big challenge in circumstances. Yeah. It is. You know, since I've been SPDM there for eight, nine years, it's yes. been a challenge getting parents into the school. Yeah. Parent involvement and then touching on soft skills, which we've talked a little bit about already. And like Mr. Davis said, I invite you to please come and visit and see our kids in person, oh. how they really have stepped up to making sure that they do greet. And I'm at the buses in the mornings making sure to see them when they get off the school bus. And they're very quick to try to beat me at saying good morning. But one of the best things things that we just did recently was on Dr. Seuss's birthday the community members we had a community member for each classroom that came and read we used work ready funds to buy each classroom the hard hat book it's a new children's book by John Gordon mm -hmm. and the community members read that book aloud and then left the book in the classroom so that was an example of encouraging soft skills it's about teamwork mm -hmm. so there's many things listed that you all can look at but definitely our kids are really stepping up and soft skills so I'm going to turn it over to Miss Boggus now to finish up this um, on the school visit, we went and uh, visited Meade County School. Uh, we took a group. Stacy went, Scott mm -hmm. went, myself, Josh Kelso, Wes Bethel, which is a, a special ed teacher, and Millie Williams and Penny Roberts. We all uh, went together um, to visit this school that Jay Nora Anderson recommended us to go because of the um, same demographics to our school, um, similar scores um, and things and she really was interested in how they do their special ed um, co-teaching and uh, she wanted us to really see that in action and um, because that's where we we fail on the uh, not failed but, no but uh, the, an area we needed to work, work on, an area we on. needed to mm -hmm. focus on um, so we did get to see that in action it was very interesting when we first went we just saw a special ed room with uh, three different area, three different groups working, um, three different teachers working with three different groups. So that was very interesting to work with, to see that. And then we actually seen in a regular ed room, the special ed teacher, an aide, and a teacher all working together in the same classroom on different skills, but at the same time. And then, you know, we heard a uh, timer and the teachers rotated and worked on different skills with the same with different groups of the kids so um, we didn't even realize which is the regular teacher which one was the aide and which one was the special ed teacher at the time so um, all of them what we took away really was that all the staff was invested in the students and they were all taking account you know we got to move all the kids we're not just this isn't my special ed kid this isn't my regular ed kids but we've got to move them all and so they were all invested as a team and as a family as a school so um, we um, our plan we have went together and we've, we've all talked as a group again then we talked to our leadership team and talked to Jay Nora and you know about our thoughts and what we want to do and how we kind of want to move forward to next year um, and so what we have decided and are hoping to do is to implement some um, um, co-teaching co strategies um, with a couple of rooms like I would um, have Wes in my room with uh, during math time to work on some different um, groups at the time and just kind of see how that goes and get our feet wet into that and then a couple other grades as well to see how that takes off and go from there and kind of build up and we're also, she's also talked to Mark Martin who was the leader there um, to get some more information on that. I know we all appreciate 
Mr. Davis giving us the opportunity to go and really pushing us to go to other schools and see things. Because I know Mr. Blake and I talked when we got there. We're more of a, I need to see it. I mean, you can talk to me all day or give me a piece of paper, but I need to see it in action to really buy it. In. And when you go and see it, I mean, you're excited. I mean, it was a well old machine, and we understand that it's going to take time, but that's why we want to implement it slowly so that other teachers can see it in the building and they can get excited about it and really get buy in from the staff to make it make us go forward so it was just it, we appreciate that ability as a staff to go and see other schools so i think it's really important that we we're, we're able to do that and i didn't mean and it's my fault i miss mr adams mm -hmm. and uh, so saving best for last he's going to talk about safety <laughs> really quick so <laughs> Well, maybe the, the, the topic maybe is not certainly important or, or best, but well, that's what I mean. No, uh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> but uh, we we have lots to be proud of at Greenville Elementary School as far as our school safety. Uh, we began the year uh, with uh, safety update training being presented by Officer Wes Miller and Officer Albro, who are our uh, school re resource officers. Uh, along the, the way this year, we gained uh, Officer Brett Robertson as uh, our elementary. Um, School resource officer, he has been quick uh, to come in and develop relationships with our children. Uh, he uh, experienced our Blackhawk Academy, uh, and so with the background of law enforcement that I have, I can tell you that it's it's crucial for some of these children to see a law enforcement officer in a positive light, Absolutely. and these men are doing that for us, and so we're grateful for that. Um, we do follow the district and school safety plans uh, and update as, as directed. Uh, I do want to share with, uh, with you that Ms. Jones said today, the news reporter that came and talked with her uh, said that our school was the most difficult to get into. <laughs> that's a good thing. Yes, yeah, she did accomplish. She's like, and you're so uh, that's something I think to be proud of. You know, <laughs> yes, we certainly yes. want to be welcoming to our families. But as a parent, I want to know that my children are safe. And so 99.9% uh, .9 of the time, this is going to be viewed as a good thing from a parent standpoint. Uh, and so we're very proud of that. Uh, the field trip shirts that uh, Angie mentioned earlier, we're very grateful that the school was able to purchase those for our kids because when you take a large group, we're going to be taking approximately 90 fifth graders to Frankfurt uh, on Thursday. And so every step that we can put in place to make that a more safe trip, yeah. We're, we're all in favor of doing that. And, and shirts, as simple as that may sound, make a tremendous difference because uh, if you've ever tried herding cats, uh, it can be challenging. <laughs> At least if they all look kind of the same, it makes the job a lot Bright easier. Gold. <laughs> so we're, we're thankful for those shirts. Um, classroom numbers have been uh, posted inside and outside of the, the doors and, and the, the windows of the rooms. And uh, in the event of a, a critical incident, uh, we feel like that's going to certainly help with our preparedness and help the, the first responders uh, as they come to uh, uh, to deal with that. So we're thankful for that. And um, I guess that's about all that I've got. We, uh, like I said, with, with the, the background that I've got, uh, I, I can tell you that I, I appreciate the steps that our administration have taken to make our school as safe as, as possible. You know, there's a there's a fine line between it being safe uh, and secure and it being approachable and being you know user friendly. And I believe that we're about as close to that line as we can we can possibly be. And so I'm very proud of our school for that. Thank you. As you should be. Um, I was going to mention thanking our law enforcement that are in the school. I'm, I'm sorry if she missed out on this, but Brent got to attend the glow party, you know, for the candy sales, and uh, it was really good to see. Okay, I got a Christmas dinner. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but he was helping the kids get their glow bracelets on, and it was really neat to see him interact with the kids and them trusting him. And, uh, that was a great thing. So thank you all for giving us this time, and you can tell we could keep talking forever about our school. Yeah. We love it. So well, uh, be proud. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I do have thank you from the file, though. Oh, please, yeah. Make sure you direct them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm kidding. I do have something to say, though, um, as far as the, the classroom dojo goes. Now, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just said, you owe me big time. All right. Um, thank you for talking about the classroom dojo. I know that when I was at Bremen, it made such a difference in, in classrooms. I know the difference that it made. 
And the one thing that I know parents, I'm not a parent myself, but I'm a teacher of many, many students, and they were mine. And she knows know. when they're in my classroom, they're mine. The unfortunate thing is the amount of time that it takes as a teacher to get that information out to parents every day. So those, are, those teachers who are doing that, I didn't do it because I, I just did not have the time to do it. I wish I had now that I'm looking back on it, but I know how much time it takes, so thank you to those of you who are doing it. Also, sometimes the only things that, that parents hear are, your child did this today, and it was all the wrong stuff. The Classroom Dojo keeps the parents informed continuously, as you said, so thank you for your comments on that. For the good stuff, not just the bad. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Lyle, rebuttal. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. We're on your side. <laughs> we don't either. We don't either. I hope that I can. Thank you, Thank you, folks. Thank you, folks. Well done. Thank you, well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, see, Miss Harsey, we got everybody here. Um, well, I'm missing one parent, but she. I understand. I'm it. just saying everybody here is going to be here. We're running a little behind, folks. We try to keep it tight, but you know, we, about as good as you're going to get when you go fifth. <laughs> so, uh, sorry about that, but take your time and. and uh, Mr. Harrison, turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Davis and board members. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to come in front of you tonight and share a little bit about uh, our school this year. Um, we do want to share that we've had a great school year. It's been exciting. Uh, a lot of positive energy going on at the Longest Elementary. Um, we're going to talk about test scores briefly. Uh, talk about that that uh, kind of title we earned, being an other school. We're, pr we're proud of that, being that that be the best option out there this year. Uh, uh, but we are proud of our, uh, our results, um, but we're always looking to grow and make those results a little bit better next year. So uh, beyond just talking about test scores, we're going to talk about the exciting things going on at Longus and some of the uh, innovative changes we've had and uh, looking forward to improved scores even next year. Um, before we get started, I just want to introduce everybody here on, the, on our council uh, to make sure you are, you're comfortable with everybody here. Uh, we've got some teacher representatives here. Uh, Miss Renee Kincaid, she's uh, helped me with the years experience. Twenty seven. Twenty seven years experience. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, no, not she's um, she teaches fifth grade uh, language arts, uh, so she does a great job. She's a uh, she's a leader in many many areas, so leads clubs and things like that. So we rely on Renee quite a bit. We got Misty Sanders there. She is Renee. Uh, Misty, help me with years you experience. This year will be twenty. Twenty years experience. Okay. Um, she has. She's kind of a great utility staff person for us. She's willing to do or able to do anything we call upon her to do. And uh, so she's she's uh, serving a term in the computer lab and doing a great job providing support for that team, but also the technology side of things. That does a great job. Uh, Sarah Wester. She's down there. She's one of our primary teachers does a great job teaching kids to read uh, when you go into her classroom doing a walkthrough it's just amazing to see that well old machine she has going on and, and kids are really really growing in there um, <laughs> high expectations uh, mr. Jared Baker one of our parent reps is with me here um, he's a local minister uh, he does a great job uh, serving on our council he does a great job being a live auctioneer to, at a fall festival or anything we, we call upon he's willing to jump in there and do so uh, we do appreciate having parents like him to uh, to be supportive uh, to jump into talking about test scores um, you can kind of see what we've got on the sheet there uh, try to keep it as simple as possible uh, I thought I would share the state threshold scores there with uh, proficiency uh, separate academic scores and growth um, with the state, the test scores, they're kind of a, a unique calculation. I'm sure you've heard that from the, the other schools, so you know a little bit about that. Below that, you see where Longest had proficiency scores, uh, 20 points above the benchmark there, so we were very pleased with that, and those are your reading and math scores. Uh, your separate academic scores, those came from your social studies, science, and writing scores. Uh, we beat that, that mark as well. And what we always look for at Longest is growth, growth in every child, growth in what we 
trying to do, so we met that goal as well. Uh, growth, uh, we had a especially strong growth in reading, so uh, very pleased with that. And that, that score came from our fourth and fifth grade scores, uh, so very pleased there. You can look down, down just below that. You're going to see our reading, math, social studies, science, and writing scores. Uh, and I've also shared our novice, apprentice, proficient, and distinguished percentages. Uh, the number we look at right now uh, with the changes going on with the K prep and how they're calculating, we're, we're getting new calculations next year. Uh, the one thing you can really focus on is how many of your kids are getting being proficient or distinguished, and that's the goal. You want all your kids to be proficient or distinguished. So, uh, at longest, we're seeing reading scores that are that continue to climb. Uh, with uh, that's one of our better scores we've had over the last five years, with 64.7 percent, uh, and you can see how that relates to the state average of 54.6 percent. Math, again, pretty solid. I really like seeing that low novice rate. Uh, we're getting that percentage up, and again, we're above the state average quite a bit there. Social studies, um, we had a high number of proficiency kids, but we didn't have as strong a, a distinguished category there. We'd like to see that a little bit higher. And we were just below the state average there, so um, we did make some changes in social studies, and I, I have in full anticipation that our, our social studies scores are going to take a big jump this year, knowing what's going on this year versus what, what's been on the last couple of years. So it wasn't anything major, but, but I've seen some changes that I'm really excited about, and I think our social studies scores are going to jump. Science, uh, that score does not look very impressive, but when you compare that score with other elementary schools and being a first year in science, we ranked pretty high in the state in elementary schools, so even with a poor percentage there, we, we did quite well there, so uh, that's a new science kind of a, a assessment, a new way of doing things with the, yeah. with those kids, so the, so science is, is kind of a, a transition period for a lot of schools there. And to be fair, you heard this before tonight. Yeah. Going to be fair, this was we were told this was not going to even count, even going to count all year yes. long until yes. after the test, and, and, yeah. and yeah, we are going to count. But you still have done so. the bill, though. Yeah. I'm proud of what I'm seeing, yes. you know. And it's maybe yes. our kids aren't aren't thinking like <laughs> they want us to think and practice that. But I'm proud of what they're doing, and our teachers are jumping in and, and trying to, to teach that. Uh, writing score, uh, you see that uh, we're not pleased with our writing score at all. And uh, when I first got, a, I get you know principals get a little bit of a hint of score doing some checks there and and uh, I'm not able to share those out but um, I did go to Renee almost immediately say I didn't give her scores but I said Renee we got to get busy on something today and so that was like first of August and so uh, we hit the ground running trying to look for ways to improve our, our writing stuff for the, so we've had a full year uh, to look at things and I'm going to ask Miss Renee later in the, the presentation here to talk a little bit about our reading and, and writing uh, improvement efforts. Uh, she also also leads our uh, language arts PLC. That's where once a month our teachers get together and talk about their content areas. Uh, they've done a really good job. It's you know, when we go home in the afternoon after one of those meetings where teachers are talking about how they can improve our school, I go home kind of on cloud nine because I'm like, I get pumped up and excited about that many adults, professionals really geared up and trying to make our school better. So um, I kind of hope Renee and, and our team feels the same way, but they've done a lot of great work and, and addressing the writing score along with reading improvements is something they've been doing a lot of. You're going to see there, our, and you've heard me speak at different board meetings, our big focus continues to be growth in every child. You know, we want every every child, we'd love to have every child proficient distinguished. If they can't be proficient distinguished, we want them growing. So, and maybe one day they'll be proficient. So, that's our big goal. And we're also trying to make a school, um, positive school culture over there. Make it a, I want kids to come to school and be excited to be there. And, you know, I'm seeing that. I'm seeing kids and staff members uh, be excited about coming to school. Uh, and that's kind of what we're about. We want to create an environment where people enjoy being and um, I think that results in I think it shows up in numbers like office referrals I mean we're having less office referrals now than we've had since I've been there and I've been there a long time so it's it's pretty exciting to me and I think a lot of that goes to teachers creating the culture in their classrooms that, that, that you know pictures. yeah they're just enjoying that experience in there so it's we're not having to send them out to the office to you know to get some kind of discipline it's they're solving those problems on the local level but it's also 
they're creating a positive classroom environment, which I'm excited about. Okay, Ms. Renee, you want to talk a little bit about our reading improvements we've been doing and writing? Um, we started this year, um, when the school year started, with a new reading series. Um, we adopted, it's called Benchmark Advance, and at the beginning of the year we had it for third, fourth, and fifth grade. Uh, we've been really pleased with it. Um, it's got a lot of rigor. And it's making kids think in a way that they've never had to think before. So it's been kind of challenging. Um, we've had to deal with, you know, maybe some not so high scores that we've been used to, but that's been okay because we're seeing growth. And I am seeing the kids um, able to talk about things in a way that I've never seen them do it before. And to me, that's exciting. Um, it's also got a lot of writing embedded in it, as um, it's got its own writing you know, section, but also the kids are doing a lot of reflecting on what they read, giving their opinions about things, and writing it, not just speaking it. And I think that that'll help with our writing. Um, another thing that we've done uh, for our writing focus to try to, of course, improve those scores, um, we've taken a look at our writing policy and plan that we had um, at the school. We've made some adjustments to that. Um, we've also done some staff training and some training on how to score the writing pieces and we did our first school-wide scoring back in the fall when we did a scrimmage, a writing scrimmage. And all the teachers came in and we did some training and then we scored. Each teacher had about three or four pieces that they scored and you know I think it was enlightening to them because a lot of the teachers had never seen what fifth grade writing looked like. You know what was expected on the K prep for writing um, and I think that really helped us um, you know we're constantly looking at things um, trying to make our writing better and one of the things that we realized we needed was some consistency across the building and writing and the new reading series has that we have since the year started picked up second grade also in January we adopted it for second grade so second through fifth is all using the same now same series and I feel like that's really going to help with the writing because it's consistent across the board um, we, we, we had had the, I guess we were guilty of trying to be so strict on it to get the results that I felt like we were getting a little bit cookie cutter in the process and, and kids, the creativity from their point of view, uh, thinking through it, uh, writing procedures, things like that, you know, that it, it wasn't working for us. Yeah. And so Renee and her POC, we talked about, you know, lightening up on that the cookie cutter <laughs> approach and give a little more freedom to the kids. Uh, we do have support structures in place where they have things they can they can lean on uh, but we're trying to get that creativity where your uh, your your early child is working on good sentence building uh, good paragraphs and then as they get down to the lower hallway your upper grades they're starting to develop those strong ideas and really able to put together a piece that that transfers what they're thinking and problem solution problem solving to uh, a finished piece so uh, and many times that's what it is it's it's thinking through that process and and some of our kids you know they, they they're looking for that adult to jump in and, and help them you know give them that answer we want them thinking on their own and that's the big thing and I think writing is thinking so uh, we want to teach them how to get through that process so um, Misty you want to take a minute and talk about a couple of things uh, positive things going on at LES um, we started this year the ESS breakfast club and um, we have it every morning from 6.55 to 7.25. So when they get off the bus, they can come to the breakfast club. And they have, we worked with Joe here at the board and with Lisa in our lunchroom. And they get breakfast, but they come in for extra support, whether it be they need some extra computer time, extra homework help. Um, we, the first couple of weeks, we saw relationships built with students that, like, I just, I'm all over the building because I see all the kids, you know, but there's a couple of them that, you know, it's helped, I'm, I'm a better person because of them, I feel like, you know, and, and they're like a little family. There's about 10 to 15 on any given day that's in there, but they're just like a little family. If somebody's missing, they're like, well, we're so-and-so, or, you know, and they're praising each other, and it's really, it's been a benefit. I, I've I really enjoyed it. I do it on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday mornings, so, and we've seen lots of progress and some kids that would normally 
don't have the support at home, you know, to get stuff done. And one little boy was so excited because I did his homework with him and I signed his homework packet. And he said, they're really going to let you sign it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, buddy, I, I'm doing it with you. I'm going to sign it, you know. And, sure. and he asked me one day, he said, my mom forgot to sign it. Can you sign it for me? You know, and I said, yeah, we'll go over it. I'll make sure you can know it and then I'll sign it for you. So that's been a, a big plus. And I will, not to jump over, but as a classroom teacher, there are still a lot of students without technology accessible at home. And so sure. that's been a way for them to get to use these programs outside of just the classroom time. So they get so excited to have that extra little bit of technology time that a lot of us take for granted isn't in every household. Mm -hmm. So it's been a good benefit for that too. Well, I'll jump in there and say, you know, we it is an ESS program and we, we pay a couple dollars there, but it's, it's <laughs> well not, not paying for what value that these teachers are giving these kids and and I think Missy if I'm right there's like three of you that, that are pretty consistent filling mm -hmm. up the week yeah you Miss McGill and, and, and Ms. McKinney mm -hmm. and um, so we got we have consistency in there and so they're looking forward to seeing specific uh, people in there and, and we're seeing kids in there that you know from the face of it you wouldn't anticipate they'd be willing to get there bright and early and mm -hmm. as we're opening the doors but they're, they're yeah. getting there yeah one one boy gets there every morning he's like first one out of the car he's ready to get in there <laughs> start working so um, another thing we do is um, you want to talk about technology you can okay. technology uh, of course I'm in the computer lab um, the school and the PTSO did upgrade my lab this year um, it's gone it starts people come in at 7 30 and it goes till 2 20 every day um, we do Lexia reading plus splash math exact path um, I try. I, I usually spend like this week is going to be Lexi and Reading Plus week. Next week will be Math week. I kind of rotate it so the kids it's not as they don't get tired of doing the same thing when they come to me. Um, we also have an, an upstairs lab, and I know first grade uses it because it's hard to get in exact path time and Lexia time and flash math time. So we have a calendar that um, stays in my room, and they can schedule classroom times for the upstairs lab, and they go in there for like 20, 25 minutes at a time, and the whole class can work on one program, and it also gives the teachers a chance to pull one-on-one -on -one kids who need certain things to work on so we also do that um, I'm talking about intervention real quick. Okay, intervention. I'm sorry. You You're good. That and I forgot. Good. <laughs> um, as far as intervention, we do have the Read to Achieve um, grant. And Ms. Bethany Crouch is our Read to Achieve teacher. Got to give her a plug. She's, she's she, probably having one of her most successful years. This year. has been the most successful year yeah. we've had with us. Those kids it's are coming out of that program just, <laughs> it's incredible. It's a, and she works hard. It's, it's just amazing. What's I always name? want people to come watch her. What's her name? It's, that is a Read to Achieve grant. That's where the state we we it was a competitive grant we we earned probably probably 12 years ago it started out quite quite a big grant about 70,000 per year and it's dwindled down I think this year's like 47.5 but it still provides a teacher and it, it has specific rules where we have to do a certain program and this teacher is highly trained and uh, it, it serves a, a smaller number of kids but it's intense on on those kids that it serves and it brings them up to grade level and it's pretty impressive it's it's amazing to watch when you you get a child even when I taught first grade they didn't know their sounds they didn't know how to they couldn't read and they worked intensely and by the end of the year they were reading on level and it's, it's amazing it does only serve a certain amount of kids but sure. she works you know, she has small groups she works with. She has individuals she works with. It, it pays off in the long run. And she spends half her day and working in like small 30-minute segments for like one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And then then the afternoon, she pulls small groups to like one-on-five. Mm -hmm. And so she does service a little bit more than just, you know, the, the small number of one-on-ones. But, but for a year, she will work with eight one-on-one -on -one kids. And she's given intense uh, recovery efforts with those children. So we've, we've seen some serious growth. And, and that first class she had first semester, they uh, they graduated with some of the highest marks that she's had. Uh, very impressive. As a first grade teacher, it's amazing. I mean, because in a classroom setting, you do everything you can, and you still you still see a lot of the same struggles with those kiddos. And her program, the way it's outlined and what she does and says, and it's so scripted, it's amazing. I mean, we've really seen unbelievable, unbelievable growth with them this year. 
So how do you determine who gets to participate in that program? Uh, there's there's a bit of um, you do some early assessments and then you pick some you you know kids in certain ranges. Mm -hmm. You make the selections there. She takes uh, the first. Um, sorry, no, you're, you're good. She takes the first map scores and it has they have to fall below a certain percentage, but also above a certain percentage, mm -hmm. and that's key because a lot of times you think oh these are the lowest kids that we need to start servicing, but the program program wants kind of that middle that way they can show the growth quicker and move hopefully out and then by that time some of those lower numbers have progressed in the classroom and after 16 weeks she reevaluates everyone with her own testing and then puts in new yes, so it, it's really a very analytical specific so how everybody's getting their fair share yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. backtracks yeah. to make sure yeah, yeah. 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 And then we also, um, my team, the practical arts team, we do our tier three uh, RTI kids. Uh, tier two is taken uh, care of through classroom and through our ESS uh, person, Morgan Murphy. But my team does the tier three. We pull, we have a solid hour in the morning from 7.30 to 8.30 that we pull and then some of us pull from 10 to 10 30. I pull during my planning time so that I don't have to pull the child out of core time. Mm -hmm. I pull from 12, 15, around 12 15 to 12 45 depending on the day. So it, we just work our schedules around their needs mm -hmm. and um, I work one child math only and one child reading only. But we service right now we have I have two Miss McGill has two fifth graders. Uh, Miss Berry has a third grader and Miss Vendor has a first grader that he did he's too low to qualify for reading recovery right now his scores were too low um, to do that so Warren has worked with him all year in RTI one thing that, going back to this I think we're, we're very data driven at longest and, and, and these teachers every homeroom teacher knows where their kids are you know and we, we map test three times a year and we do other assessments uh, but our, our teachers know well where our kids are performing and uh, they, that, that allows them to do a lot of interventions in their classroom, but also go to the tier three levels where Misty and her team can jump in there and get some of your more intensive cases. But, um, you know, it's a, a big, big part of that intervention model does fall on the classroom teacher. And it goes back to them knowing kids uh, based on their data, based on their, you know, daily observations and trying to trying their best to get them up to speed. So uh, got some great effort going on there. And I'm just real proud of like trying to get growth out of every child. Um, Sarah, you want to talk briefly about some of the positive uh, extracurricular activities we've got going on? I sure do. We have some amazing things going on at Longest. Our academic team had a wonderful year this year. We took home lots of trophies and celebrated them each Monday morning. Um, our archery team is a little smaller this year. I think we didn't have quite as many come back, but um, the ones that are there are still working hard, and I know building that north middle team as well. Miss Barry has chorus every Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday <laughs> afternoon. That's what we have to remember all the, the days. Miss, and it's it's the first couple times. I think last year she started it where you have to audition, and that's you know it's kind of been a, a different way of looking at things. But they really there's so much pride in making making that chorus and, and behavior's part of it too. She takes that into account and they're amazing. I mean, our productions are unbelievable. I and mean, they performed here and they are they are amazing. Yes, yes. it's amazing to yes. watch and listen. Uh, we also have the Junior Beta Club that is fourth and fifth grade. Miss Renee, you wanna say anything about it? Um, this year we uh, incorporated fourth and fifth. We have 53 members. And just because a kid doesn't make it at the beginning of the school year doesn't disqualify them throughout the year. If their grades are there and their max scores are there, they can be asked to join you know, all year. Um, we've done um, a lot of things and I'm, I'm real proud of our Beta Club. And then we also have STLP, which is Misty's Technology Club. If you want to say anything about it, yes. um, we do the news. We have a newscast that we do that we show every Friday morning to the school. Um, right now, coding is big. The game in the gaming world. Um, there's a education-based coding site that I um, uh, joined, and the kids get on there and they can make um, like 
they they can type a story in and create their own characters and they love that and I didn't think they would and even the boys will say can we get on that now you know so we've had a lot of fun with that this year and then there's also plenty of sports opportunities including baseball and softball which is kicking in gear right now I feel like they're coming in a little bit sleepier after those late, been again. late practices yeah. and games yeah. but we um, like all schools have those opportunities as well and I'll keep going with our school production and I promise I won't talk forever and ever because I should be at Martin Hall directing right now now we um, at Longest are very fortunate that every grade level does a presentation, does a production. And they start out small, obviously kindergarten and first grade are usually just a couple songs with some speaking parts in between. But then starting in second grade, every every grade level does a play. And they do this up until fifth grade where our fifth grade play is, is at Martin Hall. And so all these kids, and luckily we all get to go see the fifth grade play at Martin Hall. And it's like they, they wait for that. They look forward to that every single year. And even sitting in the crowd with first graders, you can hear them say, I can't wait. I want to play this part or I want to do that. And, and so they get so excited to look forward to that. And so um, I also work with MCTI and I'm fortunate enough to direct the spring children's show every year. And so it's amazing watching our longest kiddos show up for those auditions because their speaking voice is so much clearer, their you know, enunciation, their confidence on stage. And I feel guilty a lot of times because I think I'm just casting my kiddos. <laughs> but with parents sitting in the audience, it's clear to those guys that have been on stage before and know what to do and how to do. And, and it's amazing watching them grow. And luckily our school has supported the MCTI shows and the board, we get free buses every single gets free busing and so they usually come out and, sh and show support for their friends and it's always a fun field trip plus it's a chance to have kids see a play that may never get a chance to go see live theater anywhere and and so we talk about theater etiquette and and all the directors send content to the teachers so that you can tie it into your structure before you come on your field trip and hopefully it's not just a you go to Mark Hall and sit and watch a play but I will brag on um, longest not to keep bragging on our arts but it is an area that so many kids don't fit in anywhere else and so they're not the athletes they're not the ones that enjoy you know sports and doing other things and it's like they, they find this niche that they're amazing at and we've really developed that at Longest and really you know shown growth with those and even watching some of our kiddos who are in middle school now that had leads in the high school musical was amazing to me I mean these were little guys that just had one and two lines here and there and all of a sudden they're playing lead parts in a high school show and so it, it builds we also have two um, GSA finalists this year that I know the announcement hasn't been made but both of those were longest kiddos and so it's something we take pride in that you know yes it starts small with us but hopefully it continues and builds and grows and and they find something that they enjoy so I promise I'll stop I won't spend a lot of time talking about school safety. I mean, we, we're, we're with your help and you know Mr. Davis's leadership. We've we've done a lot of a lot of things at the school to, to make things improve. There, we got the the panic button that that's the the lockdown, and with the tech guys, we, we worked in hand in hand to get that thing uh, tweaked and get it working right because uh, we did have some challenges at first. It wasn't exactly functioning right, and uh, the tech guys kind of worked with us to, to get that locked in and, and get it working right. Um, again, the tech guys came in and installed the new camera system over Christmas break, and uh, that's amazing. We're able to right behind you. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the uh, the camera system, you know, the few times I've, I've relied on it is, as far as investigation, it is it's pretty incredible. I mean, I, I was investigating one case, and, and in the background, I saw something else going on. I saw two cases. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they saved their coffee. That's the part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Mr. Davis, he, he saw us do this, and, and matter of fact, he may have talked me into this, but we we do uh, different challenges when we do our drills. And uh, we do this, but we do different challenges when we do our drills. And I can't remember exactly what, I think it was, uh, we did a verbal release from a lockdown. And we just said, hey, let's 
let's do it to see if they will kind of release when they're not supposed to. And for the most part, I say 90% we were okay. We, Mr. Davis caught, caught one and we caught another teacher where they just started teaching. They were ready to go. So, um, but for the most part, our, our teacher, we do drills like that not to be, uh, you know, upsetting the kids or anything like that. We don't want to put them in different situations that they may face. Um, we almost did a lockdown the other day before school started. And then I just changed my mind thinking we were bringing in bake sale stuff and I thought they just too much. Yeah. And, so, and I was like, I can't do that. But I almost did that. Well, but, they were setting up the new system. We did have a false alarm. We did have but it. But yes. we did not move. I mean, I, it was amazing how long we sat and they kept trying to say and I was proud of even false alarms, how the school handled it. Uh, just just wrapping up, we just want to share a couple things about positive school culture, and it's it's an effort that that, that goes every day. Um, you know, it starts. We got a new uh, Monday morning assemblies where we kick off the week and celebrate birthdays for the week, and uh, it's just it's very positive. That's when we do our soft skills with McGill. Uh, we do our daily jokes. Uh, they're silly, but they're funny, and then we enjoy that. Uh, Unless you're the one telling yeah. it, I always get the answer. Yes. It's not funny. And Miss Bruce, Miss Bruce has to work. On her and her. Yeah, she yeah. wants to make sure nobody guesses it, so she she delivers the punchline way too fast. Just, <laughs> and then nobody gets wait it. time, no wait time, no wait time. It's like, um, but we have a lot of fun with that, and. Um, but uh, I do want to thank Mr. Davis. We do the uh, staff shout outs a lot of times in tandem with him and uh, we, we recognize a staff person on a pretty regular basis and then he'll add uh, some pretty positive comments there and, and I've had staff come to me and almost hug me and say they really needed something like that. So I sure. uh, do appreciate that and it's been, yeah. it's been very powerful. Um, Mr. Baker, you want to talk for a second about other things from a parent's perspective? Uh, just some of the positive school culture things we've been trying to do? Yeah. Um, I moved here from Grace County, Kentucky, back. And I've been here a little over a year now. I did move and, uh, from Grace County. Did you really? Okay. Well, I grew up in a little community called Simsonia, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. so we moved here. And of course, when you move here and um, you move into a community that you don't know anybody, and your kids, I just assumed they would go to Central City from where we live because it's literally you know six miles from our house. But little, little did I know. Know that you know they'd be coming the longest, so I thought it was longest because it's the longest you know school in my house. But, so, so we we come here and you don't know any of the teachers that you know you're you're dropping your kids off and and here they are and of course we got to meet Mr. Hardison, got to meet the uh, ladies at the front desk that made you feel very welcomed. Um, I can't put into words how thankful that I am that our kids get to come to school at longest I, I'm just more than amazed um, like Mr. Hardison sent my daughter a card through the mail what is that called I don't the good know news card. the good news card and you would have thought like she won the lottery you know <laughs> to know that she had it and it's always um, a very uplifting positive place that you don't have to worry about your kids coming home or not wanting to go to school they're always looking forward to it. My daughter's in chorus and actually she's going Friday night for state chorus at um, Bowling Green. So uh, she loves that. And Miss Barry, is that the lady that yes. does that? Yes. And, and I think y'all talked about that a while ago. I mean, like like, you know, when you have kids or kids, that many kids, sometimes it can be like herding cats and, and <laughs> that's amazing. That's, <laughs> that's amazing to me what, what she can do with them. Setting from a chair making hand signals and them kids are just moving and and, and it's that's still uh, every time that we go set through one of them I tell her you know you could be on Broadway producing these things uh, I think that she's a you know very big asset and uh, of course my son is Miss Kincaid and we're thankful for her and thankful that you know to have the positive leadership that he has in the classroom and um, I just have nothing but you know 
know, great things to say. Um, I'm just thankful to be able to help them. I sit on the site based council back in Grace County. So when I came here, I told Mr. Hardison, I think I got three big boats. <laughs> Made the uh, made it feel uh, <laughs> so it didn't take very much to get on. And, uh, well, let, me, you know. let me tell you this: uh, it goes back to uh, Mr. Davis and I have been talking about parent breakfast, mm -hmm. and so we've been having pretty good crowds at, at our parent breakfast. But this one month, I had one person show up. Is Mr. Jared? <laughs> so he and I are talking. I was like, he's like, well, you know, last last school I was on the site based council. Yeah, we got elections coming up. <laughs> <laughs> perfect timing, huh? Yeah, yeah, like perfect timing. So and things are meant to be. Yeah, yeah. And and my son is on the junior beta that they talked about, and that was like a uh, uh, you know a huge milestone for him. Like I sure. didn't, you just never, you know, this was not even offered back in Graves County. We never had anything like that. So you know to get that, and honestly, if I'll just be honest with you all, I had no clue what it was. You know. Like he told me he got on it. I was like, oh, well, what's that? You know, so, like I had no clue they're going to get the papers and the, you know, the big formal, you know, ceremony. And um, it was a very, uh, very That's positive thing. thing for him. It's, it's a big thing, thing you know. And um, I guess it's like any organization. I guess once you're in it, you know, as long as you keep the grades, you're in it for life. And um, so it was, um, it was a very big, very big thing for him. Safety is another thing. Even now being on the site-based council, when I come in today to talk to Mr. Hardison, they made me put on the visitor pass, and you know everybody in the school knows me. It didn't matter. You put the safety, you know. But hey, the, don't feel bad. I have to do it too. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> well, you know the thing about it is, if it's uniform for everybody, then you know nobody yes. has to worry about being singled out. Mm -hmm. I know in the society we live in now, sure. you don't want to single out anybody, and um, so uh, I have nothing. Like I said, I have nothing but good, good things to say, and thankful that in this life that our uh, children got to sit underneath Mr. Hardison and these teachers that are here. So, Mr. Baker, thank you for taking the time and for knowing your children's teachers' names. It's okay. a big deal. Okay. <laughs> it's not, not normal that a lot of fathers know that, but thank sure. you. It's noticed. Sure. And also thank you for your, for your support of the school. And I, I want to throw in, I know they, they touched on soft skills. I, I've said it with other schools as well, but it's certainly true at Longest. They're obviously putting a lot of time in it. Uh, like I said, their kids were sweet last year. I'm not taking anything away from them. But uh, maybe it's because they're starting to learn my name more. It makes me happy. But they are, it, it's a welcoming place, staff and kids. The kids smile. The kids are friendly. They look you in the eye. You, you just, you see it there. You see it in the hallways when I walk in and, and you're to be commended for that because that's not just Mr. Hardison. That's right. That is the that's staff right. Right. all buying in, talking it up, acknowledging when they do well, and it's just, it's it's a good, welcoming place to be. You got one kid who's surely a competitive kid. You got, he's competitive in basketball, he's competitive in, with uh, Miss Davis on the uh, uh, academic team, Levi. Levi. Yes. Yes. Oh my God, I could see him <laughs> <laughs> Very the competitive. And the academic team, he's so competitive. You know, he's going to look at Sherry after answering the thing, making sure she gives him a thumbs up real quick, you know. Yes. And then basketball, same thing. He's looking at the scoreboard. <laughs> he can't lose. <laughs> yeah. That kid cannot lose. He presented at one of the board meetings here. Yes, yes. I, remember him. I mentioned yeah. him about that, you know. <laughs> mm. He's he tough cookie. Yeah. He's one tough he cookie. But they, they come with a, a different, it's three of them, and those three kids, great, great family situation, but they are very competitive with each other. Yep. I'm I've seen super that. competitive. Yeah. I've seen that, yes. That's yeah. a great thing. And the, little, the little girl gives them. Oh, she's, she's, she's more competitive than any than the boy <laughs> yeah. ever thought about being. Yes, yes. I thank <laughs> you for your time to be, serve on the site based yes. council because that yes. is uh, parents and teachers. That's not an easy thing. It's extra time you get paid if I'm not mistaken zero uh, but uh, you not. take pride in it's good leadership <laughs> he's waiting for uh, he's, he's still waiting on the check <laughs> so ain't in there, they do, I never knew nothing about it so, <laughs> hang in there you didn't know anything about yeah. it it's like it's like beta <laughs> yeah 
I have a story. <laughs> but, yeah. I have and you own it for life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a quick story about beta. When my former students wanted to be on the beta club, all he talked about was the beta club. I want to be on the beta club. And I finally pulled him aside and said, D can you tell me what the beta club is? He said, yes, it's where they learn how to grow fish. So oh, that is. Is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so <laughs> well, I appreciate all you're doing. I love your focus on the arts. My daughter was, mm -hmm. was passionate for her in high school, and I've been to some of your productions, and they're amazing. So. Miss Elsie's missing last week, April. Just. <laughs> 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 well, I, a couple more things. On, I think Mr. Davis said, you know, we we have a great staff over there, and it makes it makes coming to work really enjoyable. And um, you know, you got a lot of professionals over there doing a lot of a lot of good things on a daily basis. So it's a it's a very positive in, environment, and it's you can just sense it when you walk in the building. It's uh, good teams. You know, we break things down and do things by teamwork, and it's it's a lot of good teamwork going break on. Break things? Did you break that? Uh, 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 Greenville Elementary. I've had challenges on our playground, and, uh, but uh, I just do. I do appreciate the effort that our our teachers and staff put in. It's and I, you know, I brag a lot about the teachers, but we've got a lot of staff over there that that aren't aren't certified staff. They're they're in the kitchen. They're, you know, my. I tell you what, the janitors we've got new new leadership on our janitor team and man came back to the building today and it's just incredible how the building looked you know the floors were shining and um they were very proud of that but they put in the effort and so uh we're very proud of the transition that we've had we've had some uh, leadership changes on our custodial staff and it's good good for the our, our person that, that left and got a got an improvement uh, position but uh, uh we're, we're excited about where we're heading so sure. yeah but but again you know new secretary uh doing a great job there um we just got a lot of great people that, that work as a team that's, that makes our, our school a, a very positive place. Yeah. Uh, can I say one quick thing? He was talking about his daughter getting the good news card. I got one. I did too. From the, from the principal. From the and principal. Hey, yeah. it's on the refrigerator. <laughs> and I'll be honest, it made me really do more as a yeah. teacher because yeah. you do get in the habit and get busy. And when I got that in the mailbox, I was like, oh. So I, I sat down after that and made sure I had so many every every week just because. <laughs> Mine's on my refrigerator. My son is a freshman and he had one from a, one from one of his teachers at East and it's on the fridge and mine's right beside him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like that to get into yeah. it. Was so, I was so excited when the man. I will also say I messed up. Don't don't tell my kids who are at practice right now. We're doing tales as a fourth grade nothing, not Miss Dallas business. <laughs> that was last for <laughs> <laughs> well, one, one more thing too I, I want to break on you guys so thanks for the positive leadership that we get from you guys I mean you guys are very positive through the year and it's uh, you know we speak at the board meetings and that's very stressful at times and we want to represent our school to you but uh, you're always very kind and we appreciate that opportunity to brag on our thank kids you. in front of you and, and the, the respect you give our kids and, and our school so thank you for that, thank that leadership you. Well, you guys are doing awesome keep thank it up you. and shout out to Chad Wells long night yeah. for him yeah. Thank you. Uh, he was asleep all this time. Uh, <laughs> Melody and Penny, who did not have to be here because they've got other things and stick around to hear good things, uh, and Carla for getting the food. So they all deserve some props. Yes, yes, yes. Penny felt bad. But that's what she came in. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Thank you. And I guess this concludes our site based presentation for you. So I need a motion to adjourn. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You said uh, second. I second. I I'll, 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 I'll make that motion to it. All right. <laughs> I can't. All right. So Stephanie and Susan. All right.